Testing one, two, three. We're good. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Let's get We're started. Good. Okay. Um, Let's get started. I uh, um, we have the agenda up here. I'm I uh, we have the agenda up here. I'm gonna kind of suggest remember that this and then look at kind of what I've just written up on this and then tear look sheet at here, which is what I feel are kind of the tear sheet here, which is necessary steps that we still need to complete. <coughs> necessary to get steps that we still need what we to sort of saw as a finish line for this meeting. To so, what we sort of saw um, as a finish line for this meeting. Up until so, now. Um, Oh, I didn't necessarily mean up you until needed to get rid now, of the agenda, but that's oh, fine. I didn't necessarily mean you um, needed to get rid of the agenda. Up until now, what you know, just as a very brief up recap, until now, what, what we've you know, just done as a is very brief recap, what the we've uh, done operating is model that the, uh, operating has been model used by the modeling team to been used by evaluate the, the performance of variety the performance of possible management procedures or harvest control rules, management procedures looking at both the sort of best guess as to what the future would look like, but then also considering a couple of scenarios that are intended to reflect plausible future conditions that might be more challenging for the resource. So we talked about that at length yesterday. We talked about the performance measures that you might use to decide whether a policy was meeting your objectives or not. We talked about the trade-offs. Or not, um, <coughs> that trade invariably exist in um, that fishery systems between in the sort of conservation of the resource and the opportunity to extract economic benefits from the resource, um, if you will. Extract economic benefits so that's kind of what we've will. talked about, and that brought so up a number of questions and talked about, and that brought up a number of questions and assumptions in the model about and so on and so forth. So the things that I think we want to spend a little bit more time talking about before we wrap up are first about before we wrap up our first trade considerations might be important for the 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 uh, authors of any the, sort of proposed the, management the authors procedure of any sort of proposed to consider with regards to what to Doug referred to as exceptional circumstances. So we talked about that yesterday. The idea of we talked about that yesterday. The idea any of any rule based system any, that you're going to use to inform decisions going forward. A wise one has to be. A wise one has to realize that there could be circumstances that arise in the future that make that rule based system less appropriate than it would otherwise be because. It, the then world is now in a place that it wasn't in when the world is now in a place that it wasn't in when the rules were developed. So that's kind of the idea of the exception. So we want to revisit that a little bit. So we want to revisit that a little bit. We talked at some length yesterday afternoon about whether the two primary robust scenarios that were presented kind of adequately reflected. Kind of adequately um, the sort reflected of range of, of the sort uh, of possible futures that of, the uh, possible future procedure, that it, the ideally the management procedure, procedure should be robust. It, ideally to, the management and procedure should be robust. So we'll revisit that a little bit to, more and, and so we'll decide revisit whether there are additional simulations that we would there like are the modeling group to do to inform that sort of robustness. To do to inform and then that we want to have a discussion about the and then we want to have a discussion about the if we get to the point where there's a management procedure that is to the point where there's Viewed as procedure um, that is a desirable way to go forward, um, uh, something other than way the to current forward, status quo, which uh, is something other than I would the current status quo, which is the way I would characterize it as there is no management procedure right now. It's just a it is, no fishery that operates right without, it's just a um, fishery that operates without, basically manages itself um, based on the capacity basically of the, 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 the fishery. Based on the capacity and, um, of the, the, the so fishery. Do we, if, we, and, um, if we are, we reach so a point where there is a kind of collective will to implement a management procedure, how would we go about doing that? we'll talk about that. How would we go about doing that? From there, just we'll see what that. what remains from there. Just to move what forward from what where we are at this point. To be done to move does anybody have any any questions point. or additions does have any, to what any you really want us to talk about this morning? To what you really want us to talk other about this above morning. and beyond what I have listed there. Other than above and beyond what I have listed there. Okay. So hearing none, Peter, did you have a comment that okay. clearly so hearing none, Peter, withdrew you your hand when I told you what I was looking for? But withdrew your hand when I told you what I was looking for. I to now that I want to tackle the you're just champing at the bit to move forward. You're just well, champing at the bit yeah, to move forward. And this has been nagging me all right. and, and this has been nagging me And again, it, it comes from uh, right. my, and again, my personal it comes from, experiences uh, like my, my of personal doing sane surveys and Gilmet surveys. Of doing sane surveys and, and Gilmet surveys. I mean, the foundation of our rule and is I mean, in the, the foundation of our rule surveys. is in the fishery independent and surveys. And again, I've seen and where, again, you know, shoreline changes, you know, shoreline changes can be dramatic stations, sampling stations, beat sane stations, sampling stations. 
And, so, um, and I also brought up the issue so, that, and I also uh, brought the up scrutiny, the issue the that, level of scrutiny uh, and the laws, scrutiny, the level of scrutiny and laws, of, uh, evaluating rules, the fishery and uh, uh, evaluating the fishery should be spelled out rather data clearly. Should be spelled out rather clearly. Of, uh, the possibility of getting of, uh, a, a the number that's uh, of getting extraordinary a, a number that's due to uh, something other than the normal sampling due to something routine. other than the normal so, sampling um, routine. under exceptional circumstances. So, um, I'm going under to the very bottom I'm going of the to the very bottom and trying the to find out rule and from the, uh, the states out if they, uh, from the, uh, the states if they uh, uh, changing shorelines J and Jason mentioned changing stations. shorelines and difficulty and, um, in the same stations. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm um, going like, to try and open up the discussion to see if there are any foreseeable circumstances circumstances that could undermine the entire index. So there's sort of, so there's sort of, I th I, what I hear you asking about is, I, I what can we say at this point about the, what can we say at this point about the robustness of the index or the vulnerability of the index to becoming less informative because of changes in sample practices or changes in the physical environment that affects what the surveys like would find in those sorts of things. And we can talk about that. What I see of as exceptional circumstances is kind of more, you continue to collect the data and however you you continue you to collect, collect the, data. the data, and however, and you, what, what, you collect what the data. types of observations and would what, you what consider types of observations made in the future? Would you consider to be sufficiently exceptional that you should sufficiently be revisiting whether that index continues to be revisiting whether that index continues to guidepost for management? They're they're not exactly the same thing. They're up. They're related. They're, they're obviously, not exactly because the same thing. things that you're talking about could very well be the cause that you're talking about of the circumstances that I'm talking about. Of the but, uh, circumstances. In a way, it's sort of like about, but, uh, the way I would think of it is sort of like is the way I would think of it is is. What well, and it's it is it is it is a what, bit of a chicken well, and an egg it's, problem. It is, and it's it sort is, of it is a bit of a what, chicken and an egg if, problem. Well, under what circumstances? What, what would you have to observe if, with regards to that index? What would you that have would to observe the, with regards the to the idea index that, that we had encountered in exceptional circumstances? The idea that we had encountered in exceptional And and to some level, I think we can't answer that question quantitatively right now. I think it's more a matter of of agreeing, acknowledging that that is one of the metrics that we would want to. That is one of the metrics and that we would this, want to and monitor. If the value of that metric was, if the in value some of that consistently metric was deviating from what we expected, then you would consider that an exceptional circumstance. Then you would consider that. And what I partly what I was seeking was. <clears throat> and yesterday we talked about the index as being one potential thing that would consider we consider to, to um, trigger an exceptional that circumstance. That and, the and the other thing that we talked about was harvest. And the other thing that we talked about was harvest began to uh, appear outside of the range of the uh, landings that have been used to essentially the inform the analysis. That, 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 that would also potentially inform the analysis. That without specifying exactly, you know, two years, more than 20% above the range or whatever, just saying those are two, above the range two metrics whatever, that would be those are two used. Two metrics that would be used. I'm interested in whether there are other metrics as well I'm interested in whether there are other metrics But having said that, I don't want to cut off your comments and comments and your welcome if there are, would like to be some discussion about this welcome index. Welcome there would like to be some discussion about this index and what it is. So we've got a few hands yeah. on. Uh, Go ahead, Doug. I think yeah. in a, uh, uh, the first point here I is think in a, as a general uh, heading, point here what is comes under as general this, heading, uh, I would call what comes is under index wallet. Uh, I would call survey is comparability. index wallet. That's survey we're using survey comparability. That is, that's raising, basically the um, issue that Peter is raising. Of course, you'll get raising, noise in um, surveys from year to year. Of course, you'll get noise <laughs> in surveys from year to year. Where, right. where right. there you are draw the line, I think. Uh, uh, there are changes such that you don't you have to have uh, some rules for that. The past, no. and you have to um, have some rules for that. As no. far as we can go today, um, I don't as far as we can go today, much more than a, I don't know if sure that's much topic more than a, make sure that's a topic B, under my exceptional mind, circumstances. Under your third bullet, bullet there or to next my steps. mind, under your um, third bullet, there or next be, steps. Uh, a meeting um, all on its own. This could be an mm -hmm. uh, important meeting all on its own. issue because it's relevant to the assessment. Mm -hmm. It's relevant, it's relevant, issue because it's relevant, relevant, it's relevant to the right. assessment. Management procedure, perhaps, to put more on management procedure, perhaps, you're putting more 
uh, more emphasis on it because you're putting also, uh, more emphasis uh, bear on it, in mind but also uh, ameliorated, uh, bear in mind by the fact that index uh, ameliorated by the fact that the your net index is receiving in the four times the weight as the survey the index. Other thing in the that I'd just like procedure. to mention, chair, but the other thing I'd just, just like to mention, chair, do this and at your uh, discretion, of course. Do uh, this. Around uh, Steve has example I circulated gave, around uh, the example I gave of the description of food. Uh, 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 just like a couple of minutes, some stage to run uh, through that. Like a couple of minutes, some stage pick up, to run through that. In broad concepts, it'll pick up a number of the points we're about to enlarge on. A number of the points we're about to enlarge on. Let's just, there were a couple other hands up, so maybe we'll just get those questions. Yeah, there were a couple other hands up, so maybe we'll just get those questions and then we can. Yeah, I wanted to maybe potentially. Adds yeah, I wanted to maybe agenda, potentially add says something uh, additional robustness to it. It says additional robustness. There were some other things that we talked about that the modeling team could There were some other things that we talked about that the modeling team could One of the things that was mentioned was maybe run some models on what of the things that was mentioned was maybe run some models on what have a good understanding of what happened in the 1980s. And so I think that there's some things that the modeling can do. And I think that there's some things that the modeling can do for us to get a better understanding of how the environment better understanding of how. There's some the other things that are affecting all this. Written down, there's some other things that which is that they're finding microplastics in menhaden. Which is that they're finding microplastics in menhaden. I don't think that we still understand what the long-term effect of that is I'm going curious. to be. Uh, I mean, there's I'm a lot curious. of question marks going forward, and I realize that. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of question marks going forward, and I realize you know, that you know we you probably commission can't commission all new studies as much you know, as we wish we could. But I think there's a lot of stuff that we can do as much as we wish we could. But I think there's a lot of stuff. One of the things that I'm not past to came to my mind last night. One of the things that I'm not came to my mind last night. The recovery for um, Menhaden was in the 1990s. The recovery for Menhaden in the 1990s. Extraordinary overfishing. A period of where we had extraordinary overfishing. Predator raids. Where we had and since then we've had two Magnus and Stevens Act reauthorization. And then we've had and two magazines. So we have a whole lot more authorization. Red snapper in the water. So we have a whole lot more. We have all of these the additional water. factors here. We have all of these. And I wonder if there's a way to sort of here. go and look I wonder the past, if there's a way to sort of whether or not that recovery look would have happened. Look at whether or not that recovery would have happened if we had you know, um, more predators. And so I think that there's some some stuff that we can do to better understand. And so I think that there's some past stuff that we can do to better understand the past and help us with that. Maybe the modeling team can help us with that. I think those are great questions. I would. I think those I are great questions. Think that um, those I sorts of questions, think that mostly the way I would think of scientists modeling the way I would think of questions scientists is along the line of the sort of ecosystem modeling that we talked the line about. Along the line of the sort of ecosystem modeling that we talked about. Previous workshop, about previous workshop where your models actually do try to account for effects like predation and say, okay, what happens if the predation rates go up and your, your model actually incorporates that? One of the limitations of the modeling system that this group has used up until is it is very much a single-species model. It is very much a single-species model. I I don't want to suggest, and obviously others could comment on this as well, that your... Um, asking what you are, or, or not just asking, but basically um, commenting that this or, is a, or an uncertainty that's really important that we ought to understand better. An uncertainty that's really important. I think the reality is that the modeling here approach that is being used here isn't going to help us very much with those questions. I think isn't we really, do need, to on on really on do need to rely on the work that other people are doing. And you know, as we talked about early on in this meeting, and you know, as we talked about early on in this meeting, there particularly the sort of comparable work that's being done for Atlantic Menhaden. That could, comparable work that's could ultimately done for inform Hayden that thinking could, about this. Could ultimately well, inform Dr. Butterworth said that it, it, it was possible well, and it had Dr. been done Butterworth before said to, that you, to it was possible run and like done the before harvest control to, rules that to we're proposing in the various like ones the harvest yes. on the past were oh, proposing absolutely. in various circumstances. Yes. On yeah. the past, so I mean, I think on circumstances. And yeah. so, so, I mean, I think the information that came out of that, I think, would be really illuminating for people to say, how would this rule work when we were putting to you say, know, how would um, this rule have worked when we were putting uh, a million you know, metric tons um, of fishing or uh, a million metric like that, tons that pressure of on the resource, fishing, or you know, would, landing, would like the that, rule that have kicked in even? You know, would, you would know, and, and if it did kick in, so what would it have, have what would it have done to the recovery? What would it have done to the recovery? So then we have a better sense of 
what to overfishing does to so the then we have a better yeah. sense and, and, uh, of what overfishing does what you just said the modeling process what you just said about here is vulnerable the modeling would be to asking what would have happened if you given what we're what our modeling system is assuming we understand about modeling survival rates assuming we understand about survival rates and so on fishing it certainly could do that rates and i just i just was making the observation that what it can't really do the way i just i just was making the observation that what it can't really do the simulate a change in predator bonus because there are no predators simulate in the model, per change se. in predator bonus because um, there are no predators I wanna, in the model per se. Uh, Doug, I know you um, want to respond to I that. Wanna, Robert, you had your hand up uh, Doug, earlier. I know you want to respond oh, to that. Just, um, Robert, you had your to, hand up um, earlier. I think I was oh, just, um, going to I want to see uh, um, Doug's I comments. I was, um, going to page proceed uh, Doug's comments. Of, um, the document page that he's um, distributed uh, yesterday the document that he's um, distributed yesterday afternoon. Um, so outlines distributed yesterday fairly afternoon. clearly what... Um, outlines um, fairly exceptional what, circumstances. Um, and I think in exceptional circumstances... definition in mind as we keeping move that forward, definition really in mind help, as um, we move some forward, boundaries on the would discussion really help um, of some boundaries on what the discussion is an exceptional circumstance it's when what you know is an exceptional circumstance that, it's when you know there's there are some deviations then uh, those underlying that assumptions different that were used then construct the those model. underlying this assumptions that were used to construct the model this could be on this could be on recruitment this could be on catch index this could be selectivity or some the index anything that would affect that or selectivity, some, and I know, think that anything that would have um, affected that forward, selectivity, and I think that um, maybe going um, back and forward, using that as a bit of a, a watchword, maybe going will, back and using um, that as a bit of a helpful. watchword, if you will, okay. um, would will be you speak helpful. To that, Doug, when, yeah, okay. And but before you do, chat to that, Doug, when, yeah, yeah, okay. I was just but before you do, chat had his hand up, encapsulating. Yeah, I was just going to comment, kind of Mike said, encapsulating, maybe you said, and then Robert said, but I think the model can be used to encapsulate some of that stuff. Can be in used terms to of encapsulate um, some of that collective stuff. uncertainty. In terms of so if there's a um, you know collective discussion or determination so made, there's a you know some of these things that have been discussed are important. Made that, that probably likely some of these things that have been discussed and are important or maybe likely adjustments in the then the, the model make the are adjustments in the, in the, in the how we where we set the model risk are really with that into the index where we set the level of risk which is really what want you know in my opinion you want to set it higher given so you want in my face you want to set it higher high uncertainty and you can include those in some of the best Robust high uncertainty, and you can like make sure those in scenario some runs are robust. Encapsulating, like make sure that the scenario runs are those types of things that are not directly being the, able to be those um, types of things that are not directly driven. being able so to be in the face um, of uncertainty or, and without having so the, in the face of data uncertainty all, and you know, without having the well, always the data can ask for more, but we'll never have enough. We'll always um, can ask for more, but we'll never have enough. Addressed using this model. You know, there's the ways that that isn't using this model and where you set that level of risk. The that is uncertainty and where you set that level of risk. Right. 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 Okay. So, um, Doug, maybe you okay. could so, talk a bit um, more about exceptional circumstances. Doug, maybe you could you want talk a bit more about exceptional oh, circumstances. Uh, circumstances. Yeah. Good. Okay. You went. Um, First, oh, just a response uh, to earlier comments about the response uh, the past. To earlier comments raised about the retrospective <coughs> idea, the past. Certainly, we've raised the retrospective quite idea, but still, bear in mind uh, that's quite a task. Leave it on the agenda. But still, what I did uh, want to say though is on the agenda. What's been raised what I did is want to say though that, is what's been raised is the possibility uh, that uh, there could have been mortality in the past. For the different levels of natural mortality in the past. future only. For the moment, the we've taken it forward in, in the future only. But in the, the same way as we're asking, Dave Chagger in the same way, the same et way as we're to asking, inform us Dave Chagger on, et al. Uh, to inform us on some more specificity in regard to possibilities of the requests that are there. That the same request is almost well, going to their group because what's important would apply with this past as well is yeah. because what's important with this natural mortality is different in the past. If natural mortality is different in the past, assessment model, we've also got uh, to rerun the assessment which model. Is another way of saying recondition uh, the operating model is, which is another way of saying recondition the operating to model. To allow for that, just different language, the same thing. Do that to allow for that because when we do that, we will see different trends. 
to what we've got here. So be careful about here of what was going on interpreting the, the trends and then you saying here of what was going on in the resort. Changing. And then if saying if natural mortality, was, mortality changing, was changing, you'll see different trends. If natural so mortality was changing, you'll see different right. trends. But, so uh, that's it's got to be done self consistently. Right. Right. Done. But, it's, uh, but that's so certainly much something that can be done. It's not uh, so much the group we have here. For, as from input uh, the from technical outside, group we have that, here, that group, yeah. as uh, from that input group from must outside, be extended that, to, uh, that group, yeah. uh, that group uh, must a larger, be extended to um, a larger assessment. Uh, a larger, you have for um, a larger assessment um, group where you have. For but Doug, Mark if I might, it just, um, um, it I mean, just to sort of connect the dots just, there a little bit, because I think what you just said is very very helpful. Connect the dots there a little bit, because I think what you just said is very very helpful. The modeling group did some robustness tests. The modeling group did some robustness assumptions that were not did not speak to the issue. That Kendall was talking about, but not, did not they were good for examples of different. Good for examples that in, in some cases led you to then refit the assessment models because you, because you were making a different assumption about natural mortality historically as well as currently. So historically, just a case in point, that's one could do that type of robustness one could do that by say surmising along the lines of what you said that natural mortality rates were lower in the 90s because there were fewer predators around than they are today and that they might be in the future. Than they are today. You could you could do that. And might and again, the evaluate the robustness of the model to that. You could do that, and again, evaluate the robustness of the model to that. That's exactly situation. the point. Uh, the difference, of course, that's to exactly what we did point. and what this is, uh, the is difference, the idea of course, to what we did and uh, what this is, changed in the is the idea that we've done so yeah. far uh, saying changed. Uh, yes, I agree. Yes, yes. we've done right. so far uh, saying. The other point yes, is, I agree. Yes, uh, yes. right. Uh, the other point you is, can get in um, principle into this process. You can get with in principle much more into this process models, with species operating much models, much more complicated and so operating models, multi-species operating models, models and so on. Uh, what is conventionally being done? What is uh, to emulate what is conventionally the being done? Fix is to by emulate using the multi-species fix at the single by species using single change the idea of at the single species level. level. So the idea of allowing both in the past and in the future is to emulate the past what and in the, the future right. is, right. is to emulate what would be the multi species right. effect if you had it uh, in there. If we're through that, but, I'll um, then have a if, uh, if, we'll, if we're through, through that, the, I'll then have uh, a the document or sure. we'll you the uh, the other Co carry on. Yeah, I'm just going to make a note of that. Carry on. Yeah, I'm just going to make a note of that. So, Steve, if we can just get to the start of this document right at the top. I'm uh, not going to go and, through it in any uh, detail at all. It's I'm not going to go through it in any detail at all. What the head is almost more because just to show you uh, what the head what is. What you'll are. see in the first because, section uh, is what you'll see in the first section. Specific. You'll see a few formulas. And remember, this is a few formulas. And remember, this is specific. You'll see a few page, formulas as you go um, down the page. They're detailing page, how you calculate um, the TAC. Detailing how the indices how you calculate the TAC. Strangely, how the indices are made up. Strangely, well with J. You'll see J indices. Fix on for a composite abundance index. It was in this fish. Fix on for a composite abundance index. It was in this fish. Combination the same sort of, of thing, a number of but yeah, combination of independent of fishery a number of indices, but if you go through fishery that dependent indices, uh, <coughs> process, go through uh, what's that rather important uh, here, process is uh, what's rather I'm on now here page two is uh, I'm on now page two down. Uh, <laughs> and uh, about halfway down, a little bit further down, there's no the heading there, no a little bit further down, Steve, yeah. Uh, Note where is my magic procedures in the event of missing data. Procedures in the event of the, missing data. It's important to have um, those specified. The, because uh, otherwise it's important you get to have those real specified. Mess. One because otherwise you get point yourself into a real mess. Survey. One missing data a point, one missing survey from the point of view of operating is not the system, a train spec. But you need pre agreement from the point of view of operating the system. Mm -hmm. uh, but so you need pre agreement. Don't want to go into the details do. here. Uh, just so that is something you don't want to go into the details here. Just and that then is something we move through. So there are some details. And then we move through. Already by some page details, four, but you're into appendices. Already by page four, uh, note into the appendices. General, uh, all the uh, main text the set out. General is the all the main text set out. Uh, is the when you have to calculate what we had said uh, when you have to calculate the power of TAC, and this applies the only if you're below a certain threshold, as simple as that, the formula you use. So it's as simple as that, pages. But now we come to the first three appendices. Uh, that is the really and, uh, and, uh, and that's um, the that is the that includes. Um, 
specifications in detail of what Pito was asking for uh, the other day, Pito was asking for it's, uh, the other there's day, an index it goes into here. this. It's but exactly there's an index that goes, goes into the raw data you collect. But exactly to the index as the raw data you collect. And this you'll find that's the model of the, 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 the TAC. And this you'll find that's the model of the TAC. You'll find this is done pretty extensively you want. And um, this is like this, so there was appendix want, A, uh, there, this is like this, so there was appendix B, A, uh, there, this, as you see a lot of deep B, B uh, there, this, uh, this, this appendix, as you see a lot of deep, if you go to page there, nine, uh, uh, index, that if you go to page uh, the nine, that came out of there, uh, that were subject to the results that GLM came out of there, were subject GLM to GLM standardization, GLM standardization, the idea here is not what you do with the assessment, because the idea here is not what you do with the assessment, better, which may be every year. Yeah, you have worked this out on the basis of your going through a top work approach you're going through a so you need work to approach get this clear Hilbert cut so everyone so you knows exactly get this what clear is cut so everyone so there's knows exactly there. what there's is going to be done so there's an appendix there we need to worry about the details yeah the appendix if i go down we need to worry about the details then i had to give the appendix framework and that's then i had appendix c and that starts on the other input there were 50 dependent indices going the other input there were 50 dependent indices going into this is a fishery independent fish it's set up very clearly dependent Index. What that index set was, up very clearly, how you the result. What that index so was, how are you going to analyze the results here? Yeah. So it's not this way to compare the way you're doing things. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's fine. fine. You better can take the better way of doing things, things on board. That's fine. You when you have your multi-year revision. revisions on board, the point is, once you have your multi-year revision, you need to make sure that you're getting your input in a comparable way. You need to make sure that you're getting your input in a comparable way. And it's all very clear that they do that. So appendices A to C. Make sure they do that. So we can move on. Appendices A to C. Appendix D. Now we can move on. Which is the one primarily appendix D. Uh, um, which is the one primarily Steve, before so us. I'm trying to find the right um, page. So that's page Steve, so I'm uh, trying 21. to find the right page. So that's appendices page A, B, and C uh, 21. Here, we're giving appendices A, B, and C here as there we're needs giving to be on how you go from raw data as there needs to be as on how you go from raw data inputs that go into the field to the inputs that go into the formula. formula. As Peter's been and alluding to you may here. well have in as these you may well have your comments in these about, you may well have your um, comments what shall I say? about outlier uh, um, what shall i say um, outlier leading into uh, what tests. might be uh, leading an exception into what might be what might be circumstances an exceptional circumstances what might be the way this was carried out you'd say sorry but it wasn't comparable the way this was carried out wasn't past. adequate or wasn't uh, comparable with what we had in the past. we've got to think past. again uh, and Appendix We've got D to think is really pointing and to appendix D is really now, pointing uh, to the this think appendix. Again. It's one now, we use uh, generally in this South Africa across it's various one we resources. Use generally in South They're Africa across in various the, resources. Uh, which are common are issues in the this <laughs> and there are uh, which are resource independent in this as well. and there are resource give specific a little bit of a flavor as well. That. I've tried to but, give a um, little bit of a flavor of that. Drawn, but we, um, uh, it's also drawn that we, we uh, plagiarism uh, here. should acknowledge uh, that, that it was pulled out of the uh, process uh, that and it was rules pulled out of the process and the rules primarily by Australian scientists. So it's primarily by Australian scientists. And we adapt so it for that's the origin. And we adapted it and for the word uh, local circumstances comes up as well. And um, the word meta a little bit of a as well confusion um, there and sometimes a little bit of a meta confusion there and sometimes but, uh, don't let that confuse you. Meta rules. Uh, essentially, but, uh, don't this let that confuse you. Uh, essentially, this is trying to set up a process. You. Importantly, the first they paragraph are, says importantly uh, that they are they are first. Uh, uh, First, they're, they're on third first, line. They're not uh, a mechanism for they're tinkering. In third line. They're not a word mechanism for every year. tinkering. The point the is word that they are every you year. only the point go is into that this. They are you if you've only got compelling reasons go into to do this. this. There's if you've got compelling reasons come up to, to say so. things aren't reasons what we that have come up to say things aren't what um, we anticipate. Also, when importantly, put this in place. about four um, lines down, also it is difficult to provide firm definitions of. It is difficult to provide firm sure of including definitions of, and to be sure of including this all document is a process document. 
this is more than a, is a process another document. set of rules. It's more just than a your rules another set of so rules. Far. It's just saying after that there's got to be an element of scientific so judgment and common after sense. After that, there's well. got to be an element of scientific uh, judgment so and common sense. We need to go well. through all the details uh, here. So uh, we need to go through the all the somewhere down here. Uh, uh, the the text somewhere on the first down, page. You'll uh, see the word the text compelling. On the first page. I haven't got it exactly beyond my compelling fingertips here. I haven't got it exactly on my this first page. But set out. Uh, some this examples first page in very set broad out terms some examples of, uh, in the sort of things you're looking for of, in many fisheries. Uh, the sort of things you're um, looking for, for in instance, many fisheries. If I've got, um, sorry, I must close. For instance, I must remember, if I've got, I'm sorry, I must screen. Screen. So, yeah. Examples, what if you can just push up a bit. Survey estimates of abundance that are appreciably outside the bounds. Survey estimates of abundance that are appreciably outside the bounds. I'll show you in a moment just exactly how that is done. I'll show you in a moment. Just here exactly we had, how that is done. Uh, this was a fishery uh, which has. Here we had. Uh, on, uh, this was a fishery which has two uh, on, species uh, of actually uh, the same two species or, of uh, uh, the same uh, as uh, but genus uh, or I don't know what actually two different species uh, but uh, our hag fishery is actually two different species together. The ratio and we make certain assumptions. Uh, the ratio of the species also in the catch that we don't throw uh, away you'll see also normal assessments that we don't throw away we assessments, redo assessments normal assessments on a routine basis we as one of the assessments on a routine basis we as one of the things to tell us filter. Or but again, you can getting out read the details at your again, leisure here, you can and even the read details, the details at your leisure here, the spirit and even this. the details on it. If I just move on to the second page, but if I just move on to the second page, section D. Where one point two section D. Yeah, thanks. One point. Uh, this was more. Where's the first yeah, page and a half? Was uh, generic. This was more. Where the first was page and a half was, was done generic. specifically. For this, this was more something that was done specifically. So as I for say, this, this is a framework fishery. So as I say, this is a framework fishery we're looking at. And other some of it applies whatever fishery we're looking at. Tailor made for the other specific of fishery. Or these tailor made made as specific Unlike the introduction tailor made. They were Unlike the made introduction, which was general, they were tailor made you would look for at. the specific fishery uh, and of ideally things you would, you would look at. Uh, and, uh, and ideally, you would uh, annually uh, is there uh, uh, review to see uh, uh, is there <coughs> evidence of have this, aging practices uh, this lot changed and indicate have aging practices different which would change and indicate something substantially different. Would again, the details don't matter the here. I'm just trying to give again the details don't matter here. In this. I'm just trying to what give that an example of what's by in this. Is D1.3 on the next page? What that is followed page, by is D1.3 on the next page, page Steve. Steve. The sort of things that and you this could is do. going to process. Uh, the sort of so things that you could do. It's not only a question of have you got exceptional circumstances. It's not only a question of have you got exceptional circumstances. Um, how severe you are may, they? You know, formulated um, advice. This could include. You may. You need know, to change formulated TAC, advice. This could a include review of the management procedure. Need to change in TAC. Getting more data. Review of the management but, uh, procedure. It's not specified getting more data, exactly what you're going to do. Uh, it's not specified exactly what you're going to do because it'll be inefficient on circumstances and it'll be inefficient use of time to try this. There's got to be science and judgment. And that's what yeah. There's got to be science and judgment. And, and that's what this is about. And the law, this is the sort of thing you want to get about. And I think uh, put together this is and the sort of thing you want to get. In fact, at the level uh, of those we had a moment ago, in fact, at the level of those we're talking about a moment ago, things with Gulf Men Hayden we want to include. Sort of thing. And the last with Gulf Men Hayden we want to include. And the last point I'd like to go to final section here is gives you a flavour of the final section here, which gives you a flavour of Appendix E on let's see, page twenty-seven. Uh, uh, let's see where are we <coughs> page you see 27 the heading there uh, is future projections <coughs> you see the heading and there we give that is both in future projections and we give that the, both in tabular uh, what form what is the range uh, of I always forget the, the 90% uh, probability the range uh, ranges I always forget you the 90% percent probability into these ranges are the data inputs, you expect and these for, are these are the data in projections the range and these we are in terms of our projections now, the range we the expect plots, them to be gives the story a bit clearer. now let's move on to the plot which gives the, the story a point clearer uh, particularly it's got the beginning of one point here. Uh, uh, what the these are, and I forget that in percentiles, that then we add into the future for that index. There's a wide range. And then going into the future, there's a wide range we might expect. 50, 75, uh, I think that may be something like that. 50, 75, and 90 percentiles, or something like that. The details don't matter. 
But there's only one red dot here because the is the red dot put into place. There's only one red dot here because the stage was put into place. But there's only one new observation as available. Goes on, but is what you, you do these, as time goes on change. is you keep but these, what you uh, these plots don't red change. dots for the future data. But what you fill um, in is the, the red dots for the future data. Ranges and the, the question about falling outside ranges is when you see exceptional circumstances that are outside is these when limits. you see re red dots that is that are outside these outside limits. Outside uh, that data is saying we're, we're getting outside, outside the range of uh, the data when we adopt we're getting the is outside the so range we predicted that when we adopt the procedure. Say, so uh, is a that is some basis to say that we need to do uh, something. Is a situation sufficiently serious that we need to do something earlier? And we so have those. I hope that's helped a bit. Uh, so, and again, don't I hope worry that's about helped the a bit. Detail, yeah. uh, the point and again, don't worry about the main text. Yeah. Just a simple formula. The point was structure. You work it. The main some text was just a simple formula. formula. How do you, you work it? One, yeah. Some rules. Then there were appendices that spelled out in detail. Then there were appendices that spelled out in detail. To the way you how you went from the raw data and collected the inputs to the way you inputted it. Finally, there was an appendix to the procedure. Finally, there was an appendix about contained exceptional circumstances, rules, which contained what you had to consider, not exact rules, what but guidelines, what you had to consider, and what you might do if you thought to trigger. There was sufficiently compelling evidence additional to trigger. The final appendix some was additional action. Um, when you're the final appendix was. One of the, um, when you're looking, because this is one of the you want to know um, is your common diagnostics staying within the range you want to know projected. is your because data if it isn't, staying within the range certainly a case projected because if it isn't so I hope that's certainly a case for a framework that this is I hope that just helpful in giving a framework that this is more than just the formula uh, detailed, mm -hmm. it is uh, a specification of exactly uh, detailed the steps you take uh, specification of exactly thanks. the steps you take right. in, in implementing um, thanks so right. that. In um, mind again, I'd like to just so sort of visit that whether in there's mind, any again, additional I'd like to thought just sort of visit whether the there's any criteria. So there was at one point I can't remember where it was, but in the, the appendix there were a list of, so there was of one like point four or five or six but in the things there were a list of, of like you four or five or six things, like things that these quantities tracking and like it was sort of like do these still remain within it so i'm just curious as to like we talked about the index being i'm just curious as to you know we've talked about the index being falls outside of the range that you would expect along the lines falls of that figure that would be a one trigger along the lines of that figure there that would be a one trigger right okay so what these are these are the in the in the example that they saw but these are the kinds of these are the in the in the example that substantial differences between the tax allowed and the catch has actually made substantial differences between the tax Allowed allowed in the know, and so on. Made. I wonder if we want to. Maybe this is not the right time I wonder to do this. If we but wanna, I just maybe put it out there. Do we want to talk a little bit more this, about just what put it out there. things we want other to talk than a little bit more the index about itself and the other catches? Or should the, the two things that we've already kind of noted are the two things criteria that you would want to track going forward to determine whether you would want to track entering to forward to determine whether situation. Are there other things that we wanted to capture right now? Are there other things that we wanted to sort of capture right now that might be? Yeah. Uh, just a question: Can the uh, yeah. sane index uh, just can that be used? Can is the uh, recruitment index sane and, index and can that be used on its own? Is that a recruitment index and the is that, uh, is that a way to on its own monitor? Is that, uh, is that a way to or is it not sufficiently uh, monitor uh, the level of recruitment or is it sufficient sample size to be able to do something like that? Or, or it's not I, I would suggest that that is what it's being used to do. I would suggest that that is what it's being used and to do. It's right now that and it's. Sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, you know, it is. Sorry. It is. Oh, that yeah. is its yeah. purpose. Um, if I'm not mistaken. You know, it is. It, it is. That is its purpose. If I'm not um, mistaken. And in the case of the management of procedure here, we're combining um, that with this other index, which is more representative of the status of the more uh, of the status of the uh, index, which is more the, uh, representative of the status fish. of the. So I, I, the, uh, I think it is. Fish. So I think it is. Uh huh. And I for that. So that's good. I mean, uh -huh. and it's it's one and of the bullets I, up there. So I was just so that's good. I mean, and that, it's it's one of the bullets up there. So I was just kind of trying to monitor that on its own the context of everything else. else. Right. Thing right. to monitor. Well, just throwing a question out there, Steve. Else. Maybe the state right. folks. Just um, throwing a question out there, Steve. Maybe the state folks. Would doing this with this? So how the the data would come in? Would this? It would have to go to some. The data would come in. I would suggest have to go to some in the other. I would. I would 
suggest sister uh, organization the other Gulf Council they have a, a SSC, sister organization which is, uh, the Gulf Council they have not a, a SSC, have a which is uh, standing technical board does not of sorts have a technical addresses standing technical working group of sorts uh, that, that might be something to think about doing having a standing uh, that technical committee that would serve similar to have an SSC technical committee that would serve similar to then that could SSC take on some of this information and see where things are at that could Take and on some of this information, see where things are changes at, that may need to occur, and, 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 and that would go to the many changes board. that may need to um, occur, so and that would have to be like every year at set, um, set time, so, and, and that would have to be like every year. Just, 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 just some thrones of thoughts out there is to try to figure out how to actually put some thrones of thoughts out there is to try to figure out how to actually put the wheels in motion on these kind of things. In the in the structure of the commission, you've been all in the in the structure of the commission, you've been all around. Historically, <clears throat> that's essentially what the TCC um, did. Historically, the that's essentially what the committee TCC they did. served. Historically, the technical it's sort of science board. board. They served um, historically and because, we don't, really board, um, and because we don't really manage species um, by species. Because we don't really manage on a species by species. They essentially, they represented, they, essentially they represented all the agencies. Um, they and essentially they represented all the agencies. And historically, they were, they were more or less the, really the chief scientists. Historically, the state, they were the um, really the chief scientists. And they were the ones state, who started um, a lot of the fishery independent and they were monitoring the ones that goes on now. Started a lot of the fishery um, independent towards monitoring a lot of the data goes on now. Made recommendations. Um, worked on, towards a lot of the data you know, programs. Oyster fishery made recommendations. Things. On, so they essentially you know, oyster fishery I, I see related them. They're, things. They're so they essentially of I I see them. They're being there in the determining of. You know what what their purpose and vision is for for what their you know, mission what, is. What their purpose um, and vision is. Essentially, for, being what that mission is more the science um, side, but our Mac, being that group, you know, more the science receives, side. But our Mac, all the information you know, receives on the trends, all the information um, on from NOAA. The, Trends. Uh, uh, I foresee this NOAA, just like our forecast used they, to be at the beginning of the year. I foresee this just like our forecast used now to be includes at the beginning the, of the year. That J term. Essentially, the forecast the, now includes the recruitment the, index. That J combined with the adult. And the, the recruitment uh, index, index, index combined with the adult. Forms that anyway. Uh, Louisiana Gillnet and index. And in the timeline of. Forms that anyway. The data the being timeline through of June for Sains. The data being and through September through June for, the for Gilnets, Sains. And through September sure for the Gilnets, would do the combination. It could be. I'm not sure who would do the combination. State person. It could, it could be, be another analyst. State person. Have to it could get be somebody on board to do another that. analyst. We might but have that to essentially get somebody on board that to do that going into that MAC but meeting. But essentially, you would have that and going then, into um, that MAC meeting each year if things then, started to um, go awry. If TCC things started could to go awry, begin TCC some sort of could actually suggested review in some sort of collection. Some of these review, things to actually collection. Um, some of these things in place to of like something institute. like an SSC. Um, in place of like something like an SSC. That uh, brings up another question, I guess, which is that, and I'm that, sorry, uh, brings up another question, I guess, answered, which is that, but, and um, I'm sorry, is all of this, is all of this, uh, is, answered, all this modeling, um, is all of these papers going to be peer reviewed? Is all this modeling this is implemented? Um, and are these papers going to be peer reviewed before any of this is implemented? I mean that the. The process that we're describing here that has the, been the not process this that we're describing here has analysis, been but the methodology this has particular been extensively piece of analysis, but the methodology um, has in the been sense extensively of peer proof of concept, but um, in the sense um, of and proof of concept, but I, I, I um, guess if nobody else has, a, I, there was sort of silence around the room. I, I, I guess I'm, if nobody I, else has, I, I would. I, there was sort of well, silence around the room. I'm, I'm. I, well, that I wasn't part that well, function ahead, of the technical. Well, that was in part the function of process. the technical team through this well, process. I mean, I would offer that the technical team's kind of all working well, on one project together. I mean, I would offer that the technical team's kind of all working on one project together, and it might be helpful for someone outside the technical team to review it before it gets implemented. You do have external reviews. You do that with Cedar, part of that process. You do have external reviews. Fit into that as part of that process, and I don't presumably know how this would, would fit into ultimately, that, if this becomes the management process, presumably for would Menhaden, ultimately, if this becomes the management process for Menhaden, it's, it's going to get that type right. of scrutiny, I would assume. Uh, just right. offer an idea here. Uh, obviously, uh, the review just offer an is idea useful here. and desirable. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. the review the question is of useful and desirable. Perhaps mm -hmm. how you could carry it out. Of, uh, I know in the U.S. how you can carry it out. Uh, I know in the what U.S. there is enormous on independence um, in review. What the shall I say? Emphasis on independence um, in the review. The trouble is, um, uh, independence. There's a trade-off uh, appropriately. Um, 
if properly uh, informed or knowledgeable, uh, appropriately uh, difficult if properly informed or knowledgeable, and really what is happening uh, in RFMOs, circumstance, and really I've what is happening in RFMOs carried out, because I've seen reviews, reviews because the person carried out, the review which is essentially useless, because, because the person who's done the review doesn't really understand enough um, about uh, what scale. is often <coughs> very, um, what shall I say, fine scale, which is uh, the process. <coughs> what shall I say, knowledge information, actually, which is the process. You want the review, yeah. but the best it's way of doing it, you want the review, get but the best way of doing it is to get come and attend someone from like outside the process to come and attend a meeting like this and participate and input into the meeting. That's right there. Uh, the process the to, but uh, otherwise, uh, the process to uh, have tends to be, to my mind, uh, inefficient. Tends to be, all that happens to my mind, report, and then the inefficient the because all that happens is you get a report spend a long and then time the people the right analysis. Spend a long time writing, the writing counter reports that say, but the reviewer writing didn't understand X, Y, and Z, and so, and so the reviewer didn't understand X, Y, and Z. So, so, so I think more importantly right now, route. though, is, is so, acknowledging so the merits right right of though, is, some is independent acknowledging the kind of merits of some nobody's, nobody's disputing the merits of that. And, and, and that I, I would think that uh, going forward, I don't think anybody's disputing the merits I haven't heard anybody dispute the merits I don't think anybody's disputing the merits. Going forward, I think what I'm hearing is Going that forward, I this think what I'm hearing is as it moves that forward, this that that's process, a, maybe that's in the next steps category, category is that, that before we really try to start to kick this all the way down the road, we need to have some sort of some mechanism for effective some party oversight of the quality of the analysis. Party that's kind of what you're getting at, right? Quality yeah. of the analysis. Yeah. That's kind of what and, you're and as I say, I mean, at least. The CIE CDAR process is an example of that, not for this, but for an example of that, not for this, but for. And I, 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 I tend to, this, I tend assessment. to agree with Doug and in my I, experience. I, I also, I tend to agree with Doug in my experience. The caliber also, of the feedback you get is great, is much greater the caliber when you bring you get is people who have not been involved in the analysis into a session like this, and they listen to the discussion and they ask questions like this, and then they comment on it afterwards, as opposed to. Writing a report, shipping it off to somebody in, in in writing England a report, or shipping South America or whatever, and they write back and say, "Yeah, that looks South America or whatever," and they write back and say, "Yeah, that." So it, there are better and worse ways to do it, I guess. But the merits of doing it are kind of indisputable. But the merits of doing it are kind of indisputable. Yeah, I agree with that, and I've even I'm sure a lot of people in this room say I agree with that, and I've even viewed assessments with the CIE process, and that's not always perfect either, because there's still with some CIE process, that, and that's not always perfect either, because there's still a lot of It's not a perfect system, but it's, I think that's a problem more robust one than I think but it's, I think that's a problem more robust one than I think. But also the timing, I think, would be important, because, you know, the CIE review would be part of the benchmark assessment, I don't know, CIE review would be part of the benchmark assessment, I don't know, but it seems like you'd want to have that this process that would be able to use to gauge this whether the stock that status be is used, uh, you know, whether healthy or overfished or whatever the parlance will be, uh, you know, um, healthy and or make sure that the, or whatever the parlance will be, and so that those are set up for release, so make sure that comes back down for the assessment, so that those are set up for release, so when this comes back down for the assessment, those points can be used to gauge that the status points can be used to gauge. Determination um, criteria. And I don't know that we're there yet. As, 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 um, determination criteria. But I don't that, know that CIA, there yet. Might, the timing might be important um, to make sure that's. But that CIA, that or, might, those are in place before the next assessment sure rather than wait for the next assessment. And those are in place before the next assessment rather than wait for the next assessment. And, next assessment sort of and then mm -hmm. find uh, out, oh, it's not from the CIA. What we need might be worthy. That sort of thing. Pulling that in prior to the next assessment. might be worthy as a thought. Pulling that in prior to the next assessment as a thought. The logistics of. This seems to be the a bit of a challenge of given the, this the time seems to be a bit of a challenge given the, the time necessary, the, necessary, the expertise the MSC, necessary. I wonder to what extent <laughs> the MSC would be third party somewhat of a process would be somewhat of a satisfactory for y'all. How adequate that might be for y'all. Where oh, you got your answer? <laughs> <laughs> Where you got your answer? What? Um, yeah, go ahead, Ben. <laughs> well, I would just say it was yeah, go immediately ahead, head shake and why. I would just say it was immediately head shake and why. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's not like any of us have pre-existing relationships with these guys. Not like any of us have pre-existing relationships with these guys. So I'm wondering why so emphatically it was So I'm wondering why so emphatically it was dismissed. Because they're serving a different function than assessment. 
because they're serving so, a different function than they would be. Assessment. And so, in and part, so we're trying to meet then they certain be, conditions so, of that. In part, we're trying to meet you know, certain conditions of that. To meet the conditions of that MSC, you know, to meet the conditions of that MSC. Harp strategies, and, control rules, the, and so that um, includes some harp and, strategies, and control, control rules to reference um, points. And, but and that's not what the reference. They're not judging the assessment per se. They're right, not, so they're not the judging the assessors per se. You know, the right, so they're not viewing the assessors of the stock assessment. The, 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 the reference points in my mind are more important for the stock assessment. The reference points in my mind are more important for rather than the MSC. assessment. And you know, I don't, I don't want to um, rather than the MSC. get into the merits of the and, MSC. You know, I don't, I don't want a third party. Yeah, just get into the merits of the MSC process and the third party. Yeah, just because I think I don't, I don't think we want to belabor this point. I think that's that's. I don't, I don't think we want to belabor this point. For the exact same reason that I just very quickly, I would offer that for the exact same Moody's reason that I did that, all of the mortgage-backed uh, securities is Moody's some of the rated safest all things of the that you had going into the financial some collapse. Some of the safest things that um, you had going into the financial collapse. But certain times um, there's industry capture and certain times there's industry capture. And well, those are two different reasons, but by it, be that as it may, you've well, heard an answer to your, reasons, but your question, it, be that as it may, you've heard an answer I, to your you know, I think the main point was the sort of concern that... I think the main point was the sort of concern that... The purpose of the MSC uh, review is a little bit different the from the purpose... The review is a little bit different from the purpose... we can debate how different it is, but that it's a little bit different from the purpose of... we can debate how different it is, but that it's a little bit different from the purpose of... Scientific experts about the process Scientific the technical process is being done the here. Process, um, the technical process, given their, you know, here, having weighing in on whether or not this technical their, process you know, is, having is up weighing to in on whether or not this technical process is, is up to snuff yeah. or not. I, I want to try not to spend too much more time on yeah. this topic. But I, I want to yeah. try not to spend too much more time one. on this yeah, topic. But, yeah. You want to move on, but. Just a quick one, yeah, my, see, just to give another want to move view. On, but my uh, view is sort of independent. In my, just to give another view, my view is sort of independent between, between the two extremes. Uh, to my mind, I, I think what the MSC process uh, to my is, mind, I think what the MSC process is, is thing, but so to one must bear in mind something else. Same the MSC process, but one must bear in mind something else. And that is, they do not have, and that is, they do not have. Nor would people be prepared to pay for the time of those people. people be prepared to pay the degree of thoroughness to the detail of an assessment. The degree of thoroughness. They are looking at an overview, and their process will certainly pick up. They are looking at an overview, and their process will certainly pick up if they're bad oversights. In uh, uh, the process has been used, oversights, but in uh, the process has been used. Uh, they but, are not uh, there they to they dig are, into the detail. They are not there um, at to at dig into the level the you want. Uh, if you brought a peer review, at the level you would want. I don't want to go into the details of this meeting. The differences. I don't want to go into the details of expect the differences of the MSC process, which I think is actually the MSC process quite wide. Which I think is actually. Remember, it's not just the cab. Quite wide. Reviews of what uh, the remember, it's not well. just the cab. They uh, have independent so, reviews of what the cab it, is as well. It cannot be expected uh, in the time so, it takes it to get to the level of detail you'd want if you had a really thorough review. To get to the level of detail you'd want if you had a really thorough review. That's a nuance on that. Uh, so okay, that's, so that's, that's um, just to try to that. close up okay, so, or wrap um, up on. So we talked about exceptional circumstances. We've noted some things that would want to be part of that. We're not going to We're not going to nail that one to the ground right now. There's going to be further discussion, especially to get to the point where you have a document as thorough as the one that Doug has laid out to us. But I think, is there any other thoughts on I think uh, is there any other thoughts criteria on, that would would uh, we would want to consider criteria as part that of that would, sort of would consideration of consider as part, part of that sort of consideration of beyond simply acknowledging that this is a vital part of the overall process simply acknowledging that this is a vital part of the overall process um, I sorry yeah I, I do understand um, that right I, now the predator impacts I, I are not widely that right now the predator in the future are not widely understood and some of the predators they are better a, understood. If there's a direct and link, some of the predators. I know, for example, there's a, brown if there's a direct link, are an indicator species. I know, for example, in brown pelicans. Are an if something like brown species, species were to collapse, I think that would. If something like brown species were to collapse, I think that would. Okay, so warrant some kind of um, reassessment. Some okay, another so, sort of potential um, condition would be. Some, I said anomalous sort of values. Potential without condition would be. I said anomalous values. So that might be another thing. Would be. Things that are outside. Um, that might be another thing. Would be. Can I just say very generally something? 
like um, can I just say very generally something like um, indicators? I'm going to I'm sort of generalizing more than you are. So it could be it could be predators. It could also be it could be physical conditions in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, way more frequent incidences of depleted oxygen or fresh water, whatever. There's a whole bunch of things that could say, "Wow, this this part of the ocean is different than it was." Part when of all of this stuff unfolded, and we should at least ask the question: when all of this stuff unfolded, does that change our understanding of how Menhaden and their fishery interact? Does that change our understanding of how Menhaden? This is going to be a challenge to figure out what that really means. Translating that into criteria, this is going to be a challenge to figure out what that really means. In principle, that seems pretty reasonable. But I think, in principle, that seems pretty reasonable. Just comment on that point. You know, it seems like some of that. Just comment on that point. You know, it seems like some of that. It'll affect these things. So I wonder. It'll affect these I guess, but you could argue that. So I wonder. Depending on the type of nature of that, it could be that it's a pretty useful early warning indicator. Depending on the type of nature of that, it could be that it's a pretty useful early warning indicator. That you're about to see changes in the measures that you're using to inform your decision making. The measures that you're using. I don't know. I just think it. I, I, I can't imagine I, I know, that I if think it, some pretty dramatic changes I, I can't occurred imagine to the ecosystem that, that people wouldn't ask dramatic questions, not just about this fishery, but about a whole bunch of things. Questions, not just about this fishery, but about a whole bunch of things, right? Yeah, yeah. Trevor. Yeah. Are there any? Trevor. So we've talked about there any the the diet of so we've talked fish, about the um, how the diet many of our fin fish. Present um, uh, how many low levels are across many species? Present. Is there any detailed uh, information on the many diet? Species? Is there any of detailed information on the diet? Is there everything else? The, of seabirds and birds talk about the content or anything else? The, I guess the amount talk about the of content menhaden. or the <coughs> I guess the <coughs> amount. I can speak to that a little bit. That there's been a couple of papers. I can speak to that a little bit. That there's been a couple of papers that have focused on brown pelican predation. That have focused on brown pelican predation. Of, it's um, some parts of their life cycle. It's, uh, um, it's, it's some parts of their be, life cycle um, considered um, fairly important. It can be um, considered right. fairly important. The point I'm trying to make is that we. These yeah, questions yeah. are circling point around. Point I'm trying to make is that we not only with these brown questions are circling around with thin fish. That it's not only with brown issues brown right now. We don't have also the thin fish to the issues right now. We don't have the data streams to form decisions about making them. Those will flesh out over time. As decisions about them, those will flesh out um, over time. As once again, that's one of those things that as we gather that data, I think once again that's one of those things that as we gather that data. I mean, then we'll be able to analyze information. Sure. We don't have time series. We don't series. have information. Any type of reliable we don't have time, time series. series. Brown Any pelican type of reliable time series. Of um, brown pelican three, abundance four, years ago. Um, this, three, the, four those data, years ago. Other than in this, the most those, qualitative, those data, other than in absence, the most qualitative those exist in the presence Gulf of absence. Th those do not I exist in the Gulf of Mexico. Send you a study from 2017. I can send you a study from 2017. Lamb, lamb, Juliet lamb, 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 Juliet lamb. Yeah. Um, and I guess I would just add that, that yeah, you know, um, in the absence I guess I would of just add that, some that, concrete information you know, like in that, the what I understand the modeling group did is they said, well, like that, let's, let's I think about how would, how would those sorts said, well, of changes let's, manifest let's themselves, about how whatever how they would might those be sorts of changes in manifest the, themselves, the Menhaden fishery. And in the, the, they the would manifest in terms, in terms of effects on natural mortality they rates would manifest in manhaden themselves in terms of effects on and natural mortality so rather than trying to in the absence of really good quantitative information we at least can say if those if changes in the ecosystem if were to result in increases in, the increases in natural mortality to result how would that affect the fishery and that's kind of what the robustness test how would that affect the fishery and that's kind of what the robustness test is trying to do adequately which is kind of where i'd like to go Next, this have been done with can, adequately, which is kind of where I'd like to, to go. Talk about next, if other, can, um, other kind of to ways to kick the model around other, that hasn't hasn't. Other kind so of ways far. to kick can the model around that hasn't. Yeah, hasn't I just want to respond so to the the yeah. last discussion and yeah, I just want to respond to the these workshops uh, discussion you know, twice now. You know, we hear a lot about sort of the lack of data twice now. We hear a lot about. I was wondering what everyone at the tables. But I think about what whose responsibility it is to sort of gather that data and whose responsibility whether or not there are groups to sort of moving forward data to get that data. Whether or not there are um, groups moving because forward. Because there's to always get this sort of this sense that it's going to come. Um, 
because and, there's always in the future. I'm wondering if, um, if we have if we have a plan to get that data. We want to get that data, or if we have a plan to get that data. Whose role and it is to get that to get that data, and why we think that it's coming or not coming. To get that data, and why we think that it's coming or not coming. Anybody have an answer, Steve? Anybody have an answer? I think. Historically, a lot think, of it came uh, out of the academic world, which historically was a lot basic, of it came out uh, of the academic world, which was single species studies, basic, uh, a student looking at single species macro, studies, something like you know, that, a student looking at key macro, something like that. We ended up the state with of Florida has actually developed a, a, a diet lab. The state of Florida has actually developed a, a pulling diet stomachs lab with from actually most of our the species pulling that stomachs they encounter in from. Their, Fishery Most independent of the and their species that they data encounter in their fishery independent, um, and, and they're actually doing data collections, trying to begin to identify um, and they're actually the doing extensive work to try to begin to identify top predators, the some of the, stomachs, the lower levels, uh, top predators, as well as uh, the lower level, fish, even uh, men as well as forage fish, some of the ones they encounter. So the state of Florida is actually making strides in that direction. The state of Florida is actually making strides in that direction, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time, and it's a lot. Manpower to a lot sit of, and uh, sort all those stomachs. Cost. Just a lot the state of, of Florida is actually beginning to sort all those stomachs. The, the mm -hmm. state of Florida is actually beginning to do I that. I tend to recall, and I hope I'm not opening a can of worms here, but I, I, I tend, tend to recall, recall back and at the February 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 more oil spill was data to motivate related more to the data ecosystem. collection related to the ecosystem. And I don't know whether that's in fact playing out that way or not. Um, God forbid that we have to have accidents like that in order to motivate the research that we need, but it does that does ha that is sort of the world we're in. Peter? Yeah, there, there are developing uh, diet databases like on the Atlantic coast. We rely a lot on the Northeast Fishery Science Center, uh, the NEMAP program now, I've been running for 10 years, and the uh, CHESMAP program, which is a long-term trawl survey in Chesapeake Bay. So um, they're, they're well-established programs, and um, they're, you know, they do, we do rely on them for by database, data information. It is, it is, there is, I mean, I'd to, sort of to your point in a way, Kendall, I mean, I think if we were sitting in a room like this, whether it's here in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Great Lakes where I work or anywhere else 25 years ago, we would have been lamenting the lack of good ecosystem information and saying, boy, it would be bet great if we had it. And 25 years later, we still don't really have it. Um, I don't know what that says about um, how how mistakes that we're making, or whether that says what that says about the public will to invest in this sort of information. I don't know, but it is it isn't like um, we just discovered this lack of information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of points, and it's a it's a good topic. And I um, I just want to point out that um, it's great that Florida's doing that, and I think. You know, in a more ideal world, all the states would be doing something similar if we had that, that kind of money, uh, particularly because Menhane in Florida is outside of Menhane's uh, center of abundance. So it would only be getting the fringe part of the Gulf Menhane population that, that exists over the Panhandle. <laughs> so, um, which is important and good. Um, but I, so I don't know where this would ever go, but I think it would be, you know, as many times you can put on paper, um, you know, research needs, data needs, and those get manifested through like, the Menhane board that go through the commission and put their sample, we need this kind of data that can maybe help organize some some projects, some collaboration that put into for Restore Act or try to go out and find some money. And I think it's a very, I think it'd be a very valuable, um, and then there's groups like ours that can ping on that and then help try to advocate for those types of things because we all want better data and maybe we can find ways to get those funded um, through collaboration with the states and stuff. Um, you know, but I, so I think if we have a place to put something like we want this kind of data, um, you know, diet data from across the state standardized so we can you know, see who's eating who and quantify things. And I think we'll probably get that discussion when Dave comes back with his modeling, too, because likely to say we don't have all the data we want. So I think just having that some parking lot somewhere as a recommendation that would come out eventually as a, you know, something with more authority than just this workshop the Menhane board and the commission or something like that, that gets documented, that can be, um, you know, hopefully put in operation somehow. 
uh, for what it's worth, I think every single version of our management plan, the profile, the stock assessments, the reviewers' comments have always said we need trophic interaction data, period. I mean, it's like like Mike said, it's, it's I've been doing this 22 years, and that's like a cut and paste. And those are <laughs> always high-priority needs. Those have always been listed as high-priority needs, and we use that as – uh, are the first sentence in every proposal that we write that it's high priority needs and the, it's very yeah. difficult to get that money. Right. And, and I, I understand. I read all those reports and I see those things. And even our paper that we uh, commissioned on the last, or well, 2012 CDAR, we had research recommendations in there too that were along the same lines. But I guess I was maybe going, trying to, okay, put it in writing, but have a board like the Menhane board, which has, most of this, a lot of people in this room that work on data, think of ways to actually put together a project and and seek ways to get funding, like to restore, to use that as a, you know, as the ground to try to fertilize that and, and move forward with that. That's I guess that's what I'm saying. Rather than just write it on paper, try to figure out a way to operation. That's what we do. There have been restore projects submitted and they have not been funded. Okay. I mean the the problem is restores this like huge pot of money. And, and in general, there's these pots of money, and they're extremely competitive. And you put in something like, I mean, diets, we should have basic information, and we just don't. But things are getting funded that are relying on those data, <laughs> but we don't have those data. So that's a fundamental problem. And, I, I mean, things have been submitted. It's just you don't see... You know, general public doesn't see every single thing that's been submitted. They just see whoever wins out, right, on the day. Uh, Amy, who's who's advocating um, for those projects to get to get funded? Who's advocating for which projects? What do you mean? The ones that you're saying. The ones that you're saying are not getting that are not getting funded. Who are the advocates? Well, the what do you mean by advocates? Of the uh, proposals are the advocates. People who wrote the proposal funding. presumably yeah. are the advocates. I mean, Robert and I had a proposal for diet. I guess, I guess my I guess my, my next question would be is is anyone is uh, is the industry helping you advocate to get those uh, projects funded? Yes, absolutely. They've been extremely supportive. They write letters to that effect. They help us with data collection. Of um, they help us understand oil content condition, age and growth, catch per unit effort, um, just about every type of metric that they could provide us with, they do provide us with, and um, very willingly. Oh, sorry, I um, That's awesome, and I, I would love for Audubon to get in, on board advocating for things like that, because that would be really important for our work as well, if we can partner. Yeah, there's currently a major uh, funding initiative put out by National Marine Fisheries Service with the Restore Act money, and um, we've commented on some of the projects. <clears throat> and uh, the way I understand it, there is a, a board of trustees, and they are identified uh, as, as the <laughs> arbiters of who gets the money. So they are spelled out in the, you know, the intro section of how the Restore Act operates and how much money it has and where the money is, is what their priorities are. So that's where I would look for, uh, but, but Robert's right. I, I mean, you know, we've write supporting letters for many deserving projects and they don't get funded. Same thing with Salt and, Salt and Stoll Kennedy money on the Atlantic, you know, we, there's so many good projects that don't get funded, and, and it's a shame. But. Okay. Um, sorry, yeah, I've been kind of, I've been moving forward with the agenda while you guys have been talking about this. I've been moving forward on my own, so yeah. I'm, I'm feeling good about where we're at. I don't know about the rest of you. What's that? Yeah, pretty much. Go, go ahead, John. Well, I guess a bit of the irony is, you know, for the CDAR process, they're trying to move towards ecosystem management, but it's very difficult to get funded. So uh, the NIFWIP projects that we got funded over the past five years to do 5,000 stomachs and off of Mississippi, Alabama, the Panhandle, Florida, um, <coughs> that got funded, but all the collections had to be piggybacked off of other projects. We couldn't dedicate 
surveys to go get samples that would cover the entire spatial and temporal scope that really needs to be looked at. And what got funded and what I think what most of us are talking about in here are the fin fish. And to Kendall's question, they're still not looking at birds, they're not looking at mammals, they're not looking at turtles. So that's something that definitely needs to be addressed too. Thank you. Doug, sure. Uh, just a very quick one. Um, I think you really with this, you need perhaps to come at it from a slightly different angle, which is uh, you know, what realistically can you expect to get funded rather than just repeating the same old, same old. Uh, why I'm saying that is because if anything is going to be useful, it is going to have to be continued in the long term. You need long time series mm -hmm. of these indices. Mm -hmm. You can't monitor everything uh, continuously all the time. Very often what's done, and it's attractive to funders, is a short term exercise. So you get a, a bite at something. But uh, if you're really going to make anything out of it from a modeling point of view and draw any conclusions, you need the continuity over time. Mm -hmm. And from that point of view, uh, you have to step back and say, number one, we can't have everything. Number two, what is the highest priority? Uh, number three, let's address that in the context of what is realistic to expect to be funded on that long-term basis, yeah. because otherwise, there are. There's not to say there aren't values in occasional snapshots, but really, yeah. um, unless you do something like that, you're not going to be able to go and move forward with anything reliable. Thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, just real quick, and to comment to the the brown pelican, that's exactly the problem. All those papers from those are not the time series that right. we need. They're just one-off studies that don't reflect historical trends. And the only thing we can see to contrast in are historical trends. But I guess that's better than nothing, right? Okay, so um, the other thing we wanted to talk about was um, additional uh, tests of the model. So I listed three things that I thought we sort of talked about yesterday and um, just wanted to sort of ascertain whether there are any things other than those. So let me just review these and then we'll take a break and then we'll talk about anything else. So um, one thing that was suggested, I want to wait till Chad and Amy are listening because I'm... Sorry, not even my fault. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can we go go and stand in the corner now? No, you don't need to stand. I need you to stand in the room because everybody else that I want this was addressed to just left. So... <laughs> um, sorry, Chad, I don't mean to pick on you. But <laughs> so we got, so we have, we talked about the idea of maybe doing a simulation that, or simulations that considered rather than these sort of gradual or persistent, relatively persistent effects, maybe some shock or, ep I think episodic was that magic oh, word you were looking for yesterday, Doug? Yeah. Um, uh, another one was that we ended up yesterday afternoon with was the idea of at least considering in these sort of robust simulations a greater range of, ca of landings or catches that would be drawn from um, in the absence of the control rule. So at least some sort of upper uh, stretching the upper limit on how much ideally within the range of things that would be plausible. And then the third thing that we talked about was possibly doing because we did these two independent robustness tests, one on recruitment and one on natural mortality. And what hasn't been done is something where, you know, an even worst case scenario where both of those things happen, which is not implausible in my opinion, because some of the things that would affect recruitment could also affect natural mortality, some of the environmental condition changes. So it might make sense to, to consider an additional scenario where um, you have both of those things happening, maybe not exactly as they're specified in those two individual simulations, but some, some interaction. So those were three things that I think emerged from our discussion yesterday afternoon. Um, and I, so I, rather, than, rather than just opening the floor for thoughts on any other ones right now, let's, it's quarter to 10 right now, let's take a 15 minute break, 10 minute break, then we'll come back and see if there's anything more to discuss here and then we'll move on to the implementation piece. And sufficient. Um, in it, are there, uh, my question to the group was, are there any additional simulations that you want to suggest? And before I take your comment, Chad, I just also want to mention that over on the 
number three sheet here talked about this sum idea and as you can see by the scribbles I had a little trouble figuring out how to word it of, of um, simulation of past circumstances to determine what recovery would have looked like with a management procedure in place and this was just an attempt to try to capture the comment that Kendall was making about can we uh, what do the models what would the models say about what would have happened and it was a bit there was a bit of confusion there in terms of what the historical natural mortality rates might have been like versus the current ones and but I think there was something in there that I would suggest the modeling team kind of wrestle with in terms of are there other variations on the scenario that you already did do in a robustness test where you looked at changes, increases in natural mortality in the future that might relate to how, you know, a, a hypothesis about how conditions were different in the past than they are now. And then, of course, as Doug pointed out, that would ob obligate that type of robustness test would require refitting the model if you're going to make different assumptions about what ha was happening to natural mortality historically. Okay, so, yeah, Chad. Uh, all right, thanks. Um, on the combination, I agree with the change in mortality and recruitment. I don't know what other combos would be plausible, and you know, so I'm not going to offer any specific. Dis but I think probably more than that could be looked at, and sometimes, um, you know, even if more than two or three, whatever makes sense, whatever seems plausible in combination could be working either against each other or with each other. And those, mm -hmm. So I think other combinations could be discussed, maybe not run, maybe to discuss and say, yeah, that does make sense to do that. We finally captured it. I just wanted to put out the notion that it could be more than those, those combinations right. if uh, the, the team thinks. I, it's I think that in some respects, these are the two demographic things that drive the abundance. But one example of what you're talking about that might be worth consideration is a combination of a change in the demographics with a change in the selectivity patterns in the fishery, for example. Right. Um, you did look at that, and when you looked at that, the, the selectivity so sensitivities that you did, as Doug presented, had very little effect on the outcome, but maybe there might be some synergy between that and one of these things that might be worth considering. That's, I guess, as you say, the idea being considerate, maybe it's not worth doing, but okay. All right. Anything else? Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, in addition to the recruitment decreasing about 50% in the first five years, I, I think it'd be interesting to look at um, recruitment decreasing a certain percentage, like 20% uh, um, through the course of the, uh -huh. the, the projected model with mimicking the, uh, the uh, robustness 1.5 with the the mortality, maybe about 1% uh, decrease in uh, recruitment per year, right. which kind of correlates with the environmental, uh, potential environmental insults that would be incrementing, mm -hmm. uh, having some insult to or reduction in the uh, recruitment with uh, a random periodic uh, uh, events included. Uh, which would take in consideration the um, those extreme uh, freeze periods around uh, uh, in December, January that right. would have the potential of uh, impacting an age group. So maybe something where you have um, you know a scenario with a, over the course of the twenty years a twenty percent decline in recruitment. Right. Uh, or maybe even more, and then with some periodic interruptions of, of low recruitment events, episodic events, like was talked about up here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on the topic of robustness tests? Okay. So the other thing we we should spend some time talking about is the, you know. Imagine this sort of happy place where we've gotten through all of this and we've identified a, a set of or even a single management procedure that seems like a good way to go forward. Seems like a, that would be worth implementing. So then the question is, how does it get implemented? And um, from the February meeting, we talked about this a little bit and 
I think it would be fair to say that it was pretty evident that implementation of this would probably be much more likely to occur successfully if it was done essentially by the industry rather than relying on five states to independently develop uh, management procedures that sort of dovetailed and, and, um, and went through their legislative process and so on and so forth. And please correct me if I'm not sort of characterizing this correctly, but my sense was that the path of less resistance towards implementation would be one where the industry adopted this procedure presented it to government and NGOs for this is how we're proposing to manage the fishery and to MSC obviously this is how we're proposing to manage the fishery in the future does this it does this work will this work with you um, so I guess I'd like to invite everybody here to sort of comment on that and maybe have a little bit of a discussion of what that might mean how that would work what questions need to be answered in the in the near term as we move forward from this meeting to s pave the way for something like that to happen so does anybody want to kick that discussion off go ahead Chad. i guess i'll be the guinea pig um my preference would be and i think this could be workable um you know this is a good approach as a management strategy you know to, to, mm -hmm. to gauge the health of you know in the interim between assessments where there's abundance is and then how to appropriately set management measures or catch limits so and there's different ways to use this approach and i think we've talked about using it in one direction could be used in two different directions could be used in multiple ways i think of it more as an accountability measure like i've probably said before um because w when you get below that index then you do something um whereas there's nothing that happens per se as far as managing to make sure they maintain that abundance other than waiting till it falls below that index so there's other ways to go about it mm -hmm. that being said let's just pretend that this is the way it's going to be used um, as as a mechanism to if it does go over um, that there's got to be some catch limits put in place for the following year so it doesn't it's not repeated and so they can see where that if that draws up the index so you know given the system that we've got now that Discussion needs to be held at the Ma the Menhaden committee meeting and see where get the data in as or the technical committee committee if that gets the the TCC if that's if I'm saying that right and if that's a function of them to have some combination of looking at the data <clears throat> but also the the system so then at the same time you get the projections for the seasons that you mm -hmm. know what is it what is how many we fish how many fish we think are going to catch this year what does the uh, the index tell us where the abundance abundance is and do we need to not only set a quota but then the projections and analysis would also include the season seasonality of it so okay the season we have set up is adequate to catch that amount of fish but if we have to if we're getting to a circumstance where the abundance is getting lower the mac with the states in, in present is the place to talk about well so we have this we have this um a fishery that's extended to these this period of time that place to, to talk about with the analysis would say okay if we cut off 10 days or or the season we have is adequate i think that's the place to to set those management wheels in motion then those states that that go back to their commissions and adjust their management regulations and that was somewhat discussed at the mac meeting but that's that's the way i see the wheels in motion <clears throat> um to, to take place is is have the states actually adjust their rules on a maybe an annual basis or maybe if this just plays out the way you know it looks like it might be playing out on occasion they would be changing the rules you may have to change it one year go back and unchange it and let it ride again for a while but, but i think that the wheels in motion would be happening at the state level starting at the, the mac and that's the way i see it working comments on that yeah, yeah. By truncating the season a few days may not uh, capture the, or reduce the the harvest to the point where the indice is indicating because it's a protracted landings and <coughs> most of your landings are coming in June July and come uh, the end of September October um, some of the um, 
with storms and other things and the, and the, and the fish not showing, you, you, may, you may miss it because it's based on pounds. And so it, it, I, it's going to, I think, uh, for this to be implemented, it's going to take a scrutiny to put the landings of both industries, both companies together and monitor it on a, like a weekly basis to see how you're approaching your attack and to be able to mm -hmm. shut it off. I think going over, it brings up a, a good point, but, you know, what's the penalty? But this is a, basically a self-imposed um, edict by the industry where they don't want to go over. And so it's, a, it's I, um, I think with uh, adequate oversight, they, they, should, we, they shouldn't be going over. It should be leaving some on the table, you know, get within 90, 98% and shut it off. So I, I'd, I'd like to hear from somebody from the industry side, and I'd also kind of like to hear from you, Steve, in terms of how this, I know you don't have, the, the commission doesn't have management authority, but they're obviously playing a role in the sort of governance in terms of the, these meetings that happen that bring the states together and so on and so forth. And it, I, for me anyways, and maybe it's just me, would be helpful to sort of sit, have a picture painted of how this might work, especially, you know, along the lines of what Jerry says, where it is going to be more or less self-enforced. Um, so somebody from the industry maybe just talk about how that how, wh well, what your I, sort of senses of how this might work? Yeah, I, I'd comment first of all that uh, uh, having had decades of experience with state regulations, um, states typically don't like to change regulations every year. And it is a rather involved process and by the time things are adopted, it's probably in, you're into the next fishing season. So it's more expedient and more desirable, uh, I think, for some, some um, memorandum of understanding among the industry about uh, if, if this harvest cap goes through um, as to how it would be uh, divided and how it would be monitored and how it would be shut off. I mean, in all practicality, I, I see that as being more feasible mechanism. Francois? Yeah, hi, Francois Cattell again. Um, yeah, I suppose this regulation or self-regulation by the industry is enabled in this sector because there are only two of us. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly simple for us to get together. We both have a common cause um, and we understand the risks of not adhering to this. Um, and so for, it's for us to come up with a methodology which I think is fairly simple as I say because there are two mm -hmm. if that had to change well then that would be different that would be different yeah could be different depends on if another player came in what their what their view is but I think ourselves and, and Omega are at common cause here it does seem to me oh go ahead Ben uh, I would just weigh in for my own sake to say that you know, it's important to know that we're not this industry opposed to state management. You know, we're not closing the door on that. I think we just want this to be as collaborative as possible. Um, there are a number of drawbacks should this industry exceed what this uh, the harvest control rule is set, set out to do. Um, if we didn't want harvest control rules, we probably wouldn't have applied for MSC and kept the status quo, but we're taking that first step. Mm -hmm. um, if the <laughs> states with direct regulatory authority where fish are landed came to us and said, you know, we think harvest is too high, there are mechanisms in place right now to do that, the emergency authorities and things like that. So um, I think we want to be as collaborative, help the states, um, figure out that they have this comfort or this confidence that this uh, harvest is being made sustainably and responsibly. Um, but, it, you know, and it may be a situation where self-governance is uh, 
more appropriate and the hammers associated with exceeding it of losing a certification that you've spent years trying to secure um, you know some degree of resources trying to secure that certification so I think it's there are a lot of hammers if this industry becomes irresponsible um, right. so that's what I would add I'm I also I just it doesn't is this what I'm sort of imagining is a process that very much the states are involved in. It's just that the way in which the rules are enforced is not through state mandated uh, regulations. The rules are going to be enforced by the will of the industry to enforce them because of the incentives that they have. But the data is still going to be collected. The index data is still going to be collected by the states. Your biologists are going to be analyzing those data and calculating together with Amy as appropriate are going to be calculating the values of the indices. So the machinery of making this management procedure work is very much going to involve the public agencies. It's the, the distinction is that the, the implementation of the decisions that are consequent to that assessment are basically we're saying it would be the responsibility of the industry and the question is can you know or the the the, the leap of faith is to, to do we believe what Francois and Ben are saying that they have enough incentive to comply that it would be it we can have some confidence that this this would work um, and in the in that regard so Francois you had you wanted to say something yeah so I, I want to share Ben's view look I'm not we're not lobbying not to have the states involved in this. Uh, uh, yeah. We do understand the complexities given the number of states that are involved, and I'm only learning that now, but there are some real complexities. Um, and as far as uh, compliance with it, it is a fairly simple deal because there will be a sim simply a number that we cannot go over in, yeah. in, in, in a point. That number is very public to everyone around this table. you know. Uh, and so whether or not we've complied will be will be self-evident very quickly and I suppose the only difference is if it was a state statute there would be a, a, a there would be some consequence consequence but but what you're hearing from us is there's consequence anyway which, yeah. which fair enough yeah. Chad you wanted to say something and then then uh, Peter oh go ahead Peter yeah I, I just want to uh, uh, mention let, let us not forget that you know the National Marine Fishery Service is monitoring the catch overall mm -hmm. and not the industry so. right right so it's not that we would be your mic still on Francois it's not that we're that this process relies on self on self-reporting of the actual compliance there would be an independent oversight of whether you were in fact complying to the rules that you put in place yeah Chad um, you know I you know, I concur with Peter with you a little bit of having worked for a state agency in, in the rulemaking section. <laughs> I concur that those that, that can be clunky and, and cumbersome and it may not be very efficient. Some states are more efficient than others in how they can go about their regulating. So I, I get that and I understand that might not be as operational as, it, as I may be thinking it might be or say, uh, reflecting here. Um, you know, the, a memorandum of agreement or an understanding amongst the industry, I don't know if that would include states, but that doesn't that doesn't that precludes the public from that type of process and that's and i think that's going to be a big issue um this whereas if it's in the state realm the states are having those discussions um that's where it's more of a public process i know the public's allowed to go to the Manhattan board meetings and um but the public isn't sitting in those meetings and we're not involved with those decision making and have you know so there's a there's a, a certain element hmm. of transparency that mm -hmm. you would you know i would think would be uh, of value and in addition i think I've heard a couple of times, and I'm not clear that we can't go over this, like if the index was down and the catches had to be reduced. Um, and I, I get your point, Jerry, so appreciate the, you know, the seasonality and how to, there's a couple ways of going about it. And I, so when I was suggesting adjusting the season, that was an example. I should have been more clear, but what you described could be another way to go about it, monitoring in season and making adjustments on the fly, either prolonging or, or shortening the season to them, you know, as it may be. Um, but there's no real mechanism, forcing mechanism for the industry to say if they go over again, then what happens? Well, they have to go down again if that index keeps going down. Well, if they go over again, I mean, that cycle can keep going on. I know there's incentive perhaps for the fishery, but I, I don't see the hammer 
that was described unless it's somewhere that I mean we may see that it might be fine the index might be go back up but I don't the, I think there is not the accountability that I would be mm -hmm. expecting to see that in there so Jason yeah so uh, aside from if things not being codified in an actual state rule uh, if there's biological and technical data that indicates a need, our agency has very broad power to shut a fishery down. Uh, within 24 hours, we can do such. So I, I, I would disagree with that there's no accountability, e even if there's no codified rule, and we see an issue in a fishery, we can take action. Jerry? Mm -hmm. Since 2008, uh, Texas has had a, a total allowable catch on the menhaden fishery from uh, f for menhaden that's uh, caught in Texas waters and landed in Louisiana. And on a, during the fishing season, um, uh, every week we get a report from industry uh, telling us exactly how many pounds or their estimate of how many pounds uh, are, are landed um, in, through the course of the season and the, the industry has been extremely um, cooperative and open and, and sharing and as uh, it was mentioned earlier NOAA oversees all of mm -hmm. these landings and the reason I said 98% is because uh, NOAA actually corrects uh, Captain Bailey logs which are Captain's uh, visual estimates what's in the hull, but there's actually a correct, and, and so I, I, I said that 98, maybe a little lower than that, so that um, you assure know, that the uh, industry doesn't go over, because it's not in their best interest at all to go over, and uh, the main, main point I'm, I want to uh, reiterate is uh, um, the oversight, the public oversight, um, the state agency, or Parks and Wildlife, is a public entity yeah. and um, and the industry has been in, in the uh, GMAX has been extremely cooperative and transparent in um, in sharing their information with, with the states uh, uh, ever since I've been part of the GMAC which is over 25 years so what I hear Chad say I think the important point here is that he's he's looking for evidence of accountability and whether that's done by a rule process within the state agencies or whether it's done in some other way. I th I, what I hear you say is that there are a lot of public interests that are going to be looking for compelling evidence of accountability for the process. And you, what we've heard is, is people around the table sort of saying, well, we think there is accountability. We think there are strong incentives for the industry to comply. We think that Jason says that you know there are mechanisms by which the state government, even without a rule, can close a fishery under the right circumstances. I don't know that we want to spend a lot more time kind of debating the nuances of that rather than just for the record saying that for this to go forward, for this to be successful, I think you're hearing loud and clear that it's going to have to be as you're going to do it have to do as much as possible to ensure stakeholders that there are accountability mechanisms built into it. And I'm not arguing whether there are or aren't in the way you're envisioning it right now, but it just seems to me like that's going to be really important. So Peter and then Chad. I'll, I'll just give one, one, more, uh, one more example from, uh, that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, in, in New Jersey, just about every species is limited entry quota based. And at every New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting, uh, it, that are all open to the public and they're well advertised and they're on a regular basis. There is always an accountability of every species quota to date. And um, I mean, the public is, is informed on every, every program for which data are collected. Mm -hmm. Chad? Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, yeah, there are some things in place. Um, it may may or may not be on paper, may not be transparent, but there might be things that are going on that you discussed, you know, the monitoring stuff. But I guess what I'm saying is trying to just tie that loop. But and so I concur with what you said at your summarization. But so if there is perhaps if it goes down the road of a memorandum process, some of these details be flushed out. So if it if this happens 
here's here's what that triggers and it could if it gets to a point where it triggers, then we shut down fisheries. We have described that mechanism that's in place through the different states and how to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm just saying is codified Absolutely. in that type of a memorandum. What is the accountability and, and, and how will we know that's being adhered to, I guess, for... And I think, say. I mean, a cycling back to, it's not up here anymore. Don't worry about it, Steve. You don't need to put it up. But the document that Doug kind of alluded to earlier, um, that sort of is sort of the codified rules of the management procedure, that's, I would think, would be what that would would contain. And, and you know, before, I, I would assume that that would be kind of, once the sort of technical work is done, the next step would be to prepare a draft of that document, memorandum of understanding. And at that point, one would need to vet it through a process that, that tried to get, a sh re, you know, to reassure all of the relevant stakeholders that accountability was, was there. However, it might be um, implemented. Steve. So from the commission perspective, we have no mechanisms like this in place. Um, we're not a council. We're not the Atlantic States Commission. We have no authority whatsoever. Um, there's no mechanism in the MAC other than what we traditionally did, which was through Ray, um, and used to be with the state of Louisiana that we had uh, Vince Guillory's old style of forecast, which is no longer really being used, but the idea was in the spring, you'd have an overview of the previous season you'd have a forecast based on the previous season of what the expectation was. Uh, Guillory's forecast for the state of Louisiana, based on some of the indices out of their fishery independent data, provided a forecast for what they, their expectations were based on meteorologic conditions and that sort of thing. Um, we've kind of gotten away from that with the exception of simply the, the formula-based uh, process that, that NIMPS provides. Um, so I don't see where this would be a whole lot different going into the start of the next season. And at the, towards the end of the season at the October meeting, being, being able to get an update as to where are we at this point in the landings. And if the previous spring index indicated the landings needed to be at a certain point because the index indicated that we had to have some sort of restriction, I think that would come out publicly that at that meeting in October, we'd know where we were in the process and have a good idea of essentially where the fishery was at and how close they were to managing based on some harvest control rules should it be implemented. Um, we don't have anything formal and I'm certainly not going to volunteer Amy for anything at this point. I don't know how long it takes to generate that J index. Um, and I don't know who would do that and whose responsibility that would be. The states are providing their own information to supply that. And based on the timeline, it could be done probably in time for the March meeting. But I really don't know who would do that. No one in our office can do that. Um, we received the CDFR data in summary from Ray. So NIMS has got its own timetable of when they can process and get these things in. It may have to change to be something where each state receives copies of the CDFRs and they collectively put these together so that we know in real time what's going on. Um, I, I don't know what the mechanisms are. This is all new ground. So I applaud I'm glad that we're finally getting to this point. We've been beat up in multiple reviews that we need to have some sort of uh, goals and objectives for the fishery. We have to have some valid reference points. And now we have to have some harvest control rules for the MSC process. I just want to make sure that we move forward in some way. We figure out what kind of mechanisms would work. If it falls within the MAC, I think that's appropriate. If there's a problem, come up with a mechanism if it's within the commission or simply within the states to go ahead and start some process. If the commission can help with that, that's not at my level to make those decisions. That's gonna to have to be coming from the commission, which the MAC reports to our full commission. 
So all of these things have to be developed and put into place, proposed and approved. Um, I don't think it's not doable. I think this is a great opportunity, and I think this is what the role of the MAC should be. Um, and then incorporating the TCC into it at some point, looking at, you know, what do you do if things change? Um, make those recommendations and put us back into some sort of a process where we review the, the management procedures. Um, but we don't have anything currently. This is all new. So just kind of keep that in mind. We can make it what we want as long as the commission is on board. So that's that's all I've got. Happy to be here. Right. Right. Did um, I don't know whether I mean I think you were sort of it was more, what you said was sort of more by way of sort of general principle and general characterization of the lay of the land right now, but you made reference to sort of timing of whether the timing and what is realistic to expect from NOAA and so on. And I mean, I, yesterday or the day before, at some point we talked about the sort of timing of the J index. And I think I'm remembering correctly, Amy, that you felt like having your understanding of how things work, that having the, uh, an estimate of the previous year's composite index by March of the uh, current year was a realistic scenario in terms of the the cycle of data processing. Is that fair? I think it's realistic. I I don't see why it wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> although, you know, Steve made the comment of he can't volunteer me, and he's right. He can't. Mm -hmm. Right. So <laughs> you, I mean, can you, <clears throat> I can't. Even you can't volunteer. Really you. volunteer me either. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, just because of the way the commission's request work from the science center there's a more formal process right. and now that i know about this i can go back and talk to there's certainly the nothing in principle that would stand in the way of that happening right in principle yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah steve so i guess this is a question for the analysts once the data is available how long does it take to put this index together is this a a two-hour process or is this a two-day or a two-week? I mean, it seems like it could be fairly automated and fairly straightforward, but not knowing, I don't, I don't know what the onus would be on the analyst to do it. It can be straightforward. The problem is, and sorry state guys, but um, <laughs> never get the data in the same format. <laughs> And that's a, a hurdle. That's the biggest hurdle. And, and, and perhaps it. that will improve if this is the type of thing that's being done on an annual basis. And it's feeding into a management procedure. Right. And yeah. so, you know, yeah. but, and, and it isn't just here. That's a common problem sure. across the board um, with receiving data. Indeed, yeah. Not just in your world. No. Yeah, Chad. Yeah, I mean, it's a good discussion. I think it's the right path, because I think it's, since it could be getting this information and using it's integral to this process, I think figuring that out is probably good. If we need to, if there needs to be more resources thrown at it, that might be something to think about, or if, we, if it can be done within the context of what's existing now, it would be good to sort that out. And obviously, I'm not the one to do that. Um, but also, you know, I've been, you know, we're, we're holding up this index of abundance um, with these surveys as the best available data, and it is because it's the best available data. And you know, but given that this, uh, it's not directed; these surveys are not specific to Menhain. I wonder if it would be. I mean, it seems to be important to have make sure that this is a, um, a good indicator of that abundance. Um, so it might be worth discussing. A putting together an independent survey across the, the, the population of Manhattan, so basically across the states, three to five years, however, would be adequate to be able to be able to look to see if this index is appropriately I see. being an index of the of abundance, and if it is, or if not, maybe that could be calibrated to to be that. And ideally, you'd have this long term independent survey that's going on at the state level using you know stratified same sampling protocols across the board. Maybe we can uh, uh, a short-term project could be used primarily just to 
gauge the the uh, you know verify the this index approach. Um, but I just wanted to. I know that's pie, you know, pies in the sky sure. and that sort of thing. But I just wanted to make mention that it's very important to this process. Maybe we want to uh, ground check it. I, I guess I would, yeah, what I would, inter what I hear you saying is not we have to do this, but rather it would certainly, you know, we are relying on this index as in being informative of what's happening to the Manhattan population. The more confident we can be that it is in fact a good indicator of the Manhattan population, the better off the management process would be. Yeah. Amy? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I don't remember which day it was, and I know I've talk to chat about this but not on the record but I thought it would be good to refresh everyone's memory that the SANE index is not the only available data on recruitment within the Gulf. Uh, for those of you that were involved two assessments ago if you recall we went through the trawl data as well which is another set of fishery independent data and those two um, surveys were congruent and correlated and provide, in my opinion, some weight of evidence that they're picking up a signal even though it's not a specific Menhaden survey. And so I think there are a lot of surveys being done that do that. They pick up signals from certain species and not others. And just because it isn't necessarily designed for Menhaden doesn't mean that it can't provide that information. So I just wanted to put that out there again to, I had forgotten about <laughs> that, but it, there are other data sets. And right. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, and to that, Chad, I, it's why I wish you guys would come to a lot more of our stuff. When we had the, uh, the last stock assessment, uh, we had it here in, uh, in New Orleans, and, and we did the, uh, the data workshop. There's actually, Louisiana has added a new gear uh, as uh, Alabama has also targeting perhaps better Menhaden. So there's, there are other things being explored, but it has to be something that's standardized across all the states or at least across the range of Gulf Menhaden. And everybody has to have the funds to be able to do it. And we have to have the analysis to make sure that it's better at least better or comparable to what we're already doing and getting a, that signal. And it's gotta be long-term. Two years, three years of pilot work doesn't really feed in much to, to what we do with the assessment. Do you have another comment you wanted to make? Um, yeah, and I, I get all that, but you know, they do, uh, they're doing a lot of, especially in the recreational fishing world, as many of us know, they're they're trying to calibrate the, the historical data with newer surveys approaches and so they're they're doing they're doing short-term studies to gauge the, the condition of the, the data they've got so I, I get all that but I think one of the things that I the value of doing a you know a short-term independent type sampling as you like you described and I understand there's lots of constraints with the funding and stuff but um, could also make sure that those surveys are caps encapsulating all life stages of the, the population. So none of those stages are they're adequately represented in the, the sample and in the index to make sure that that's happening. So we're, for instance, if there's a, you know, lo older adults out there that are not being surveyed, that would be important information to know. I don't know if that's true or not, or if that could be found out, but I think having that type of sampling approach would help address that either yay or nay. All right. Good restore act. Any, uh, any further discussion about this topic looking forward to implementation? Okay. So next steps. Uh, sorry, Chad. Yeah. Um, so when it gets into the stock assessment realm, it comes back to another CDAR. I don't know that we've got to a point where that CDAR will take what's been discussed this week and say, okay, we have an overfished condition or not. Um, there's, it provides information towards that and they've got that. So the way I'm looking at this and it's been discussed, this is a harvest control rule and that where you set that line is your, it's your risk assessment level or uh, accept, you know, it's where you want to set your level of risk. It's not a reference point per se. It can help manage for a reference point. Um, but I think that part needs to be kind of more solidified because when it gets into the stock system realm, because that's 
part of this process. I know there's the MSC and there's the stock assessment, but I think having, having, you know, I, cause I think the comment was made the other day, well, this could be the reference point. So if it gets below that, that can be considered overfished. I'm not sure even the industry would buy into that because then you'd, you'd want to have that level of risk or that index way down below. So you don't reach that condition because that implies things maybe just perceptionally, but it may not be the message they want to hear. Um, so I think we have to have, you know, kind of solidify how is this, where, where are those reference points in relation to the stock status and what does that mean and how do we, how are we using this to help maintain those, the, the, the population above those levels? Go ahead. Uh, Chad, what you've opened here is a wide area of discussion at the moment because uh, there are, to be honest, two sort of camps in the whole fisheries management field. There's the traditional camp, which is, I call it the best assessment reference points control rules. And there's actually a management procedure camp who says, who say fundamentally, uh, what you're managing for is to avoid certain circumstances. They're managing for, if you like, it has the limit reference point concept, but it actually doesn't really have the other concepts. It's saying those are means to an end, not end in itself, the ends or the performance statistics you predi predict under your procedure. And this is actually, I know MSC is a three letter word in some context here, but this is actually the point that uh, the joint tuner or FMO people are picking up with the MSC and saying, you are too reference point based. Now, I'm not sure how that plays out in the, in the US, but uh, it's not that the, uh, you know, fundamentally with this approach, it's not that it's an end, a means to an end of having target-based reference points and so forth. It's rather, it's an end in itself, that this is the way to manage the fishery. What you want is a control rule, and you want a control rule that is going to achieve certain performances in terms of the trade-offs, in terms of particularly, and where I think we are saying the same thing, particularly avoiding dropping below certain levels. Mm -hmm which I call the limit reference point concept. Uh, when, particularly with pelagic fisheries, uh, there's a major debate about, in any case, about the purpose of particularly biomass target reference points, uh, rather that you're thinking in terms of uh, the limit only. So I, I just mention this because uh, you've touched on what is a wider debate, and a debate that raises difficulties because some people are trying to see MSE as a means of a sort of enhancing assessments, <coughs> if you like, whereas the, the fundamental concept is actually different. I don't know whether that helps or kinders. So just to uh, I might build on that a little bit, I mean, I think the, the bottom line from what I hear you saying is that in the United States, fisheries are, there are some expectation in the assessment process of defining reference points and then asking questions about whether the, f the current status of the stock, where it is relative to those reference points. That's kind of an expectation, if you will. I would think, sort of notwithstanding what Doug just said, which I completely agree with, that you could, within the context of what we've been talking about here, you could accommodate that, for example, by saying that a limit reference point is typically interpreted as something that triggers action. If you exceed a limit reference point, action is necessary. We kind of have that in this management procedure. That's the J threshold. If you exceed that point, the management procedures that we talked about here would trigger action. The target reference point is a little bit more difficult, but yes, you remember yesterday we were talking about um, the comparison between the unfished state and the various management procedure scenarios and Doug was sort of um, somewhat impressively in my opinion sort of kept figuring out what the percentages were and he was saying it was it, you know there's some rules that say 40 percent and for pelagics maybe it's more like 60 or 75 percent. I think that would sort of for me be what the translation of this would be into a target reference point is that you kind of want your fishery based on the this, this, this these ecosystem discussions you want the the biomass in the fishery to be roughly between somewhere 60 to 70 percent of the unfished biomass. That's kind of the conventional wisdom, if you will, at this point with regards to 
um, <coughs> forage fishes or pelagics. So I, I guess all I'm saying is I don't think that what we're doing here is out of alignment with the, the need to basically then be able to connect it back to um, an assessment that answers the question, where are you with respect to reference points? I think, I think that's, this is not incompatible with that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I agree with that. This can be used to inform where those levels should be that we're targeting for or, or setting those limits. Right. But I don't think we've gotten that step. We haven't had that and codified that, like, yeah. as, as however that does done in this setting. You know, I don't think that discussion's concluded. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's concluded. I, I mean, I do think uh, that that you kind of, the, the limit reference point answer is kind of a no-brainer. But the target one is a more, but it's obviously, it is a discussion about, your understanding of what the biomass of a forage fish has ought to be, and that's more less informed by the kind of analysis that we're doing here than it is by, well, like the ecosystem reference points work that you that Amy and Peter and others are involved in for Atlantic Manhattan. Now that's kind of what one of the things you're trying to get at, right, Amy? Is is what from our understanding of the trophic interactions and so on and so forth? What is a abundance of Manhattan that we should be aiming for? That's the target reference point. And I, I mean, I, I think I'm kind of, I'm just kind of recapitulating what you said, but that that's, that's a question that we haven't answered here that ultimately will need to be answered in the larger scheme of the management process. Mm -hmm. just, just real quick, I mean, I'm not sure I agree that the index is the reference points, the reference point for the limit. Um, I mean, it's, it's a reference points that triggers action if that, if that line's crossed, but I'm not sure that we can say that that's a limit which below that is an overfish condition or there's overfishing that was going on if something happened under there. Because I don't, I don't know if everybody would be comfortable making that declaration because then right. we're going to talk about where that line should be then if that has those types of implications, which there would probably be wide disagreement on. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that if you're locked into the notion that you have to define a limit reference point in terms of these these words overfished and overfishing, which are kind of part of the Magnus and Stevens vernacular, you run into a bit of a problem there because what we're talking about here is setting a limit that avoids us getting into an undesirable state without saying whether that undesirable state is formally defined as being overfished. Um, I, that's just, that's not, and I think, and that's kind of what Doug was arguing earlier, in my opinion, that's actually a better management strategy is not to worry about overfished versus overfishing, but to worry about whether you think the stock is imperiled by the abundance level that you see it at. And if it is, then action ought to be taken to avoid that, which is the spirit of the limit reference point, regardless of those two words. Yeah. You won't. yeah. And I agree with that because I, I mean, I actually advocate for using the index in other fisheries the, the, on the federal mm -hmm. side to, because there's the space between the time between assessments is somewhat prolonged and, and mm -hmm. getting to that point where you turn the crank every year. So I, I agree with the approach and, and management. Um, so I, I'm with you on that one. Um, I guess that's all I wanted to say because I think that there's certainly some utility there with it. Yeah. Doug? Uh, just to enlarge again, but briefly, not. Uh, because this is a big topic and we're not going to solve it here. Mm -hmm. uh, to say, first of all, uh, even limit reference points is problematic as you go mm -hmm. around the world because the term is used in two quite different contexts. Uh, the first one is um, a point for uh, below which action should be taken and that is uh, won't compete with, <laughs> won't compete just... with the train. Um, okay. Um, uh, no, the the way uh, Mike desc uh, described it there a moment ago was uh, one way it's taken. Another way it's taken is uh, not so much uh, the operational point at which you should take action, but more uh, the the level which your action is trying to avoid. Uh, getting below, which is a little bit, uh, it yeah. has a difference. Uh, with pelagics, probably it is uh, the overfishing rather than overfish that is the more important because that is, um, that goes to fishing mortality and a lot yeah. of the uh, thoughts with pelagics with their heavily um, high level of fluctuation 
is that uh, what you really want to do is control your fishing mortality because you can't do that much about biomass given the natural variation in recruitment. So mm -hmm. you do have a problem with the overfish definition with um, uh, small pelagics because you can look perfectly good one year and two years later without having done, done anything, anything wrong, you yeah. can look perfectly bad simply because you've had a year's of poor recruitment with your longer lived species it doesn't matter you get small fluctuations the pelagic you get large fluctuations and really uh, this hasn't been tackled adequately in the field as a whole uh, simply because most of these um, norms are norms for longer lived fisheries they're really growing out of the ground fish mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and you're talking about species that are living you know, up to 10 years at least old, not small pelagics where you're through them by about age three. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've just got to be a little bit careful here about uh, uh, not attempting to lead the world on this. They're going to be wider discussions anyway. And I, I, I tend to go, I think, with where Mike was going is uh, use common sense first. Uh, not get too tied up in some of this codification because common sense is going to give you uh, what you need to do which is avoid dropping it to uh, the biomass too low and that's that's really the main purpose of fisheries management if you put it in a in a sound bite yeah or even avoid getting the fishery into a state where there is a high risk of overfishing Okay, so next steps. The the I'm kind of looking at um, the the modeling team a little bit more than I'm looking at anybody else now because I think the first next step is kind of this: is there's some there's uh, we've kind of identified some additional technical work for the modeling team to do. My gut feeling is, and it's easy for me to say because I don't have to do it, that none of these tasks are. You know, you have the model, you have to sort of think about exactly, you know, translate these somewhat vague words into something a bit more specific. But it'll be relatively straightforward to, because we're not talking about changing the model in any fundamental way. We're not talking about a whole new set of management procedures or a whole new set of performance metrics. It's a matter of sort of adding to the set of results that we've already looked at. Um, so that seems to me like that's the sort of um, immediate first next step. Uh, Steve, are we going to do, is there going to be a report from this meeting? Is that your intention in terms of process? So similar to similar what, what happened for the February, February meeting? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that'll be a document that will capture what was said here. Um, I don't think you, that, that document, well, I, I imagine you'd want to turn it around fairly quickly, but it's not, I don't feel like that document is a sort of an essential precursor to the modeling team moving forward. Um, Doug, did you want to? Yeah, uh, there was just one point I wanted to raise in the context <coughs> of the robustness test. It's what we did by eye yesterday and what technically is called uh, giving um, presenting results in terms of a dynamic B naught. Right. The idea right. of dynamic <coughs> D naught is when you're talking about depletion, and we saw it yesterday, um, it's fine if you've got a situation that isn't changing. But uh, when the situation is changing, your measure of the impact of the fishery is not the measure of where are we compared to where we would have been if life had remained the same. The measure really is where are we going compared to where we'd be going if there wasn't any fishery at all. Um, it's the dynamic being, uh, it's just a question of how you express the results. I'm not saying you don't express the results in the way we have already because that's informative on its own, but right. equally well, I think it would have been helpful if, um, <coughs> if we'd seen some of the results presented in terms of that so dynamic B naught I wrote here metrics that are relative to the unfished state. In other yeah. words, the same outputs, but this divided by the condition in the unfished state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, what else in, in terms of next steps, Steve? I mean, is it is is it? A, this is sort of a where I where I um, 
where I'm fearful of going is, so the modeling team runs a bunch more simulations, we produce a report. Do people see another meeting of this ilk in their crystal ball? Um, I think there's a hard question here about whether another meeting of this ilk is actually going to be the right way to move forward. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that if we were to bring the same group of people back into the room, say, three months from now or six months from now, and present a bunch of additional results, I think we would, we're going to hear a lot of the same type of discussion that we had, particularly yesterday afternoon. So I wonder, I don't know, I, I guess I'll throw it out there. I wonder if it might be more prudent to complete these additional analyses and then go the next step and actually formulate maybe the consult in consultation between the states and the industry, formulate a straw man or draft or whatever management strategy going forward. I just, I sort of feel like based on what happened yesterday, and, and I, 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 this is not for me to decide, but I'm just telling you sort of my opinion, but what happened yesterday that if we were to present a group like we had with us yesterday afternoon with a series of candidate management procedures and trade-offs amongst them, I don't think they're going to say, let's do that one. I don't think that's what you're going to hear. I think you're going to hear a bunch more questions about what might not be considered by what you've done. And so I feel like it might be better. <coughs> we, I, guess we, I guess maybe a more general statement would be, I think we need to rethink what the process looks like once these additional technical steps have been done. Go ahead. Uh, just one point before you get to that next step, read the additional uh, tests. Uh, what one has to do is have a process that draws a line because one can carry on envisaging more and more of those. Exactly, yeah. And I think as part of that process, before we get to what you said, the next step in the you know, formal step of that's finishing, part of finishing that process would really be for the technical group uh, to put flesh onto the ideas here uh, to, uh, and then to put those fleshed out ideas and I'm toying with whether you do it with some of the results or not uh, as well. That's probably a little bit problematic because it's getting too complicated. But really to put out those fleshed out ideas uh, to everyone and then give a say, look, if you want something more, come back to us by date, date X. Otherwise, there's the danger that mm -hmm. as fast as you produce more results, you get asked to check more things. And it's, right. it's just a question of getting that more efficient. I appreciate this meeting was a first up for a lot of people, so yeah. they, uh, they need time to take it into so account. But the, that process must be brought to an end in some so sense. So just to make sure I understand you, what you're saying is do this next round of analysis, summarize it in some way, and rather than having another meeting, say, here's, this, here's what we did in response to the discussions we had on July whatever days yeah. it is, 18th and 19th. Um, is there any, anything else that you think is missing? Let us know by two weeks from today sort of thing. And that's, that's what you're kind of suggesting? Yes, yeah, I think, no. uh, again, let's not be too specific about the concept, uh, about the details here. Mm -hmm. But I think one has to have that concept. Yep. Uh, and we can flesh it out later, depending on progress made. But um, I don't want to leave that open-ended because otherwise it will carry well, that's on kind of, that's, that's That was sort of more or less my point. The, the other thing that just popped into my head while Doug was talking with that we did discuss this morning a little bit is the merits of potentially having another expert look at the work that's been done here and um, in, a, in an effective way basically provide some um, reassurance or not but it's a reassurance to the the non the relatively non-technical people who are you know who's in tr who who want to know whether this is a sound analysis or not uh, to to have that opinion so and I'm that we that's another thing that I think you need to ponder is how to do that effectively uh, I mean, Doug made, I think, points that I would really concur with about there are many ways to do that that are not effective. 
in effect, uh, not effective, and there are relatively few ways to do it that are. So, Ben? I, I just had a couple of thoughts about kind of next steps. I think we went through five days of discussion, four and a half, five days of discussion, and I think that we fine-tuned all of our understanding a bit better about it than, say, in February. Um, another multi-day workshop, you know, I think in the near term, you know, to, to piggyback on your thoughts, Mike, are probably overkill at this time. I think we yeah. can devote some time in October at the MAC meeting. Not a tremendous amount, but, you know, hopefully we'll have some additional public input at that meeting. Um, we can continue to work through this and then you know because I, I think I, I think bringing in another expert sooner before the because I think there is still some additional fine tuning that can be done and I think the modeling team will, will take a look at that so my recommendation would be continue the fine tunement of you know of, of the strategy and host you know some or have devote some amount of time at the MAC meeting in October and we can go beyond that uh, between what we accomplish between now and October I suspect yeah. Steve so I guess to that end um, I think a critical part of this is going to be to figure out the mechanisms of how all of this is going to be implemented and monitored and not, I don't want to say enforced, but essentially where the hammers are. Um, clearly laid out Appendix D to go back to, you know, the, the procedure itself and see if, if, a, if we reach some point where there needs to be a change, how that's going to work. If this is going to be industry imposed and not state imposed, it's going to be critical to have that transparent within something like the MAC. And I think that has to be laid out clearly in order for Chad and Charlotte and Kendall and Marianne and any other NGO to be able to say, hey, look, you know, we're just happy something's being done and there's accountability and we can see it work or not work. Um, if it's if it's all behind the scenes, then mm -hmm. there's there it casts shadow and cast out. I think I think we need to have something clearly laid out, and that may be a MAC function in advance of the October meeting, while the results of these tweaks are being done, so that when we come together in October in Biloxi Gulfport, we actually have the ability to gel something together that makes sense and can be presented and if it's something that the commission needs to ratify as a <coughs> process get that mechanism at least looked at if there's memorandums of agreement between the industry and the states or the industry and the commission or the mac know what that process is going to be so steve you're saying that you think it would be good to try to have a to make some progress on that aspect of it between now and the East October MAC meeting as well as the fine-tuning of the analysis. I think if this is something that they want to put in place, mm -hmm. those are some of the steps that have to be clearly laid out, just like the results. Yeah. How's it going to work and I guess I, model? I, I guess I think that, I, as I think about that, I do think that I was sort of thinking, do those things, can those things happen in parallel or do they have to happen in series? But I think they can happen in parallel. I think that the discussion of the mechanisms for implementation is more or less independent of what the exact management procedure will be. Um, so I, I think you're right. I think there's nothing to stand in the way of, of the industry folks and the state folks scratching their heads together about developing a straw man procedure uh, that, that, you know, what this memorandum would look like. And as you say, if they, if they could, if at the October, this October meeting, you could both update the people there on the analysis that's been done and present a um, sort of your preliminary thinking, whatever the right word is for it, of the, the how the process would be implemented. 
I think that would be a pretty good place to be by October, don't you think? Yeah. Chad? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I think I like the... And, oops, and I, sorry. I appreciate that, um, Steve. I think that approach seems reasonable, and I think they can be done in parallel. I think when it comes down to if there is a memorandum agreement, if that's the route that's going, um, that there might be the need to have some specificity in there as it relates to where this indexes and what might trigger certain responses. So there, that could be laid out in general, but there might need to be a need to, to actually put some of those levels in there. I don't know how, how if that's going to be a working document, something that's going to be put out in general, and then the specifics happens behind the scenes. But I think one, I, one request I would have, and I, I understand I maybe actually agree not getting together in this workshop setting as a next step may not be that helpful. Um, so, but I think there'd also be, it'd be a value if there's a process where we could see something in writing, like have this laid out as in a draft form or a, a straw man where we could have some ability to respond to, because I know that, you know, I, just personally, I won't be able to make the October meeting. I'm not actually sure it is, but I've got to be in three other places in October and I can't make them all. So, so, but there would be yeah. hopefully others that we could get to go and pay attention. I trust me, I've been trying. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's. I think to that to respond to that. I, I that was my sense was that, and, and I think Doug was saying this was, in addition to any kind of communications that would occur at this quasi public meeting, there would be some documentation that could be circulated, a, a, a report of the technical work. And I would think a draft, draft, you know, made very clear that this is just for discussion purposes at this stage, a sort of a, a draft memorandum of understanding or what, it, you know, a f framework for that that could be circulated for. Because you're right, I mean, it would be good to get input from people who, for whatever reason, can't be present at a discussion like this. Mm -hmm. yeah, and if that were to occur, we'd, it'd be, I think, a big step in for transparency. Because, I mean, that, I guess there's that general ability for folks to always put in comments but there's not that this would be sort of new and that it's a deliberate attempt to draw in comments for, per se if you will um and then maybe dedicating you know a time during the, when it's discussed at the gmac <coughs> to discuss those comments that come in you know that might be even if people are in or out of the room because i'm just thinking of what occurs elsewhere they there's staff that review the comments just to give the not everybody may not read all the comments if they're assuming there's several that might come in. It might be helpful to dedicate some time to be able to look at those comments as well at that setting. Another advantage of, uh, of documentation would be that if you do want to, as in addition to the things that we just talked here, you do want to also invite some feedback from a, a, a disinterested party with expertise is that having a report that describes would be a good starting point for that, that you could share with that person and pers or persons. I still think that, I don't know how you would feel, Doug, I kind of feel like the, to get good f um, f feedback in that regard, you can't just send somebody a report and ask them to write comments. You need to have a, uh, some sort of process where you actually engage the person and they can ask questions and the modeling team can answer those questions and they can sort of come to common understanding of what's being done. Because no matter how well a report is written to describe this stuff, there will be details that uh, of somebody who's competent will want to know about that aren't in the report. Um, yes, very happy with the other proposals you've been making so far, but just to that sort of, we're back to the review process. <coughs> the problem there is numbers. Um, before I get to the engagement, uh, and the numbers are typically one, two, or three. With one, you risk the problem that uh, you get maverick opinions and people get into a difficulty of saying, mm -hmm. well, that was the review, you must follow that advice, and then you could come yep. back, but the reviewer wasn't on top of things. With two, you have a problem that what happens if they disagree? Right. Uh, with So you generally need three, but then as you go up to three, uh, it's difficult to get competence and sufficient time. Um, I think we need to play around with this one because <laughs> at some stage you need whether the routine uh, wherever uh, wherever that number is between one and three uh, you have to have at least one of them in a meeting 
where it can then engage itera iteratively. Right. Otherwise, it's a mess. And also, the written reviews are not satisfactory. Um, there's an element that John Pope and I do, uh, both describe of what you're doing at meetings. When you get people to meetings, you're actually buying their time and attention. Uh, because otherwise, with this level of person you want, uh, you probably won't get it with a, a Just sending a report. So yeah. the sort of idea I, I was playing around with is perhaps to have a group of three, but then only get uh, where you have a chair and two others, and only get the chair to the actual meeting. Uh, so you try to get the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. It just becomes too expensive and cumbersome mm -hmm. to get in our context more than one to a meeting. Yeah. But equally well, if you rely on one only, you have that maverick, what I call the maverick danger, that becomes awkward because they say something some people don't Jump like, yeah. and then the people who sit in the middle of that debate have that person outside who said something. You have people inside saying, we disagree. They say, what the hell do we make of this? Yeah. So uh, the defense against that is a group that's bigger than one. Yeah, I agree with you. The only thing I would add to that is that uh, um, one ameliorating factor to the cost is that you can engage people, I think, in my opinion, you can engage people pretty effectively remotely now using Zoom or something like that It's and for over an extended period of time. Or go to well, yeah, but you have to. People have to go to the meeting, though. Yeah. <laughs> go to the go to meeting. It's it's you know, an in person interaction is always better. There's more of that sort of coffee break conversation. But you know, maybe the model that you're talking about, where you could you could afford to bring one expert in, you have a group of three, the other two join you via teleconference yeah. and participate that way. Chad? Yeah, and I I was actually going to make a, a another suggestion that. Um, Maybe instead of having a workshop, I mean, I think separately from what you're discussing there, maybe as the 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 additional simulations are done and there's um, you know more information for this group to look at, maybe we can do this via webinar, you know, ahead so of the GMAC. Maybe having a short webinar. Yeah, yeah. for those that are more yeah. inclined to join and, and have been following the process, I I guess it it'd be nice to be able to see how this concludes in that regard, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 uh, see how this may or may not be um, you know, yeah, the better that's way to a mechanism you could consider. Yeah, you know, a half day webinar. Here's the results of the additional simulations we did. Yeah. All right. How long yeah, will, Jerry. About how long will it take for the additional simulations to be cranked out? Oh, but I'd say about 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, well, just see you after lunch. Holiday. Yeah, has Rebecca got them done yet, Doug? <laughs> no, she's on holiday. Oh. <laughs> uh, let me see. I'm more serious. Well, Robert, or I mean, may, I'm going to let you try to answer that question. How much? How much time to get through the additional simulation work that uh, we talked about there? I think with the willingness of the technical committee folks to have a. Uh, some email correspondence or maybe even a short call. I don't envision that being any kind of obstacle at all. Yeah. Given uh, their availability, and I can't promise that everybody will be able to comment on everything, but uh, try to come up with some kind of quorum, I think is reasonable in a, in a short amount of time, like, weeks. Like six weeks sort of thing oh, could be another. Yeah, yeah. more like l less, less than, than that. that. Yeah. Just, I mean, you're in, a, you're, in, you're in the middle of the summer, so people's availability can be pretty spotty. Over the summer, so but does that answer your question, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, thoughts? I do think it, uh, Ch Chad's uh, suggestion to review the uh, the abundance of recruitment in this index is uh, important uh, to so that we look at all of the. You know, some additional um, databases were mentioned you know, last February. I mentioned the, the the golf trawl samples that were taken off of Texas, and I'm not sure if that was incorporated or not. But um, we there's been some um, complications with some of the databases that you know in the past that we've moved away from. That it seems like those databases could be revisited to mm -hmm. see if uh, they can contribute to the um, uh, to the indice, and I, I think that, that that needs to be done first. 
before we uh, make a decision to move forward with re uh, the additional simulations to see if we have the best uh, database to going into the indice. Hmm. I I'm. We we're making any change that needs to be done upfront. Yeah. I think that's a that's a that's a thorny question. I would think because I think if you're going to take that step, and I'm going to put I'm putting words in I think Amy and other people's mouths, but it seems to me like that changes the time frame. Right. If you're going to do some sort of thorough a thorough re review of alto, of possible sources of assessment data that could inform the index, I think now we're not talking about just a few weeks. Uh, I, I, can I, am I, uh, is that an, a, a, a fair assessment of what that, the implications of that would be, Amy? Why don't you just let Steve talk and then I'll say I'm sorry, go me. ahead, Steve. Uh, I think, uh, well, I don't disagree with you. I think that goes back to the next assessment, vetting all of that data through that process but for now relying on the data that we have that we've already vetted, gone through, and have readily available. I think if we were to look at the trawl data, there'd be a whole lot more analysis than just simply plugging it in as a replacement in that index. Is, is that a fairly safe assessment of it? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we've, we've done that. Unless there's some new data set, or new information, I'm not sure where that gets us, but in my opinion, that's a whole new benchmark assessment. And I'm not aware of any new information that we haven't considered that would change those decisions at this point. I'm not saying that it will never happen, but yeah, at this point, I feel the like- reason, The reason I said this is because I, I, I thought it hurt some uh, new one uh, that is that's being collected and and um, if that's the case we, we need to do our due diligence to see how that could be incorporated but uh, yielding to uh, Steve that that may be for the next uh, benchmark and, and not for this uh, uh, that would that seems to me it would make a lot of sense for if there are sort of de emerging data sets that that you would want to plug that into the next round of the assessment I mean you're going to do that inevitably right yeah, and that's, I mean, so during this last assessment, you know, John presented on the bait fish centered survey that he has been working on, and we did review it. It's just not ready, and it's not, you know, it's there's just a, t a timing thing with it, then more than anything. Okay. Oh, sorry, Doug, and then Chad. Uh, I just very strongly agree with Steve and Amy on this. I think you have to have a sequence that you have uh, the reanalysis as part of a next benchmark, mm -hmm. and it's only out of what comes out of that that they then may take that on board in an update of the sort of analysis we've done here right. and say, because number one, it could change the assessment itself, and number two, it could change, but that you're going to need for the operating models, yeah. updating those. Number two, it could change what you want to use for an index or indices in the management procedure. Right. So get the first stage done. Mm -hmm. Don't hold this process up for the moment until you've got through that. And it seems to me that would be uh, your first revision. Exactly. Of this it would probably, the time frame for that would probably align well with this idea of somewhere in the sort of four to six year period you'd yeah. be revisiting anyways. Yes. Chad, did you want to add something? Just, uh, well, a question. I mean, I know, I understand when you do an update, it's just new, the same data streams with, with additional years and kind of crank, but is there a part of that process that could evaluate these other data sets to see their how they're, they correlate or not with the, the current index? So see what, um, what sort of correlation there is and use it as a way to, you know, as a uh, barometer in the update process, or does it actually have to wait another five years for the, uh, for the benchmark? What I heard was that, that what you just described was more or less done as part of the last round of the assessment. And I think Amy is arguing that it would make sense to do the next time you do it would be for the next round of the assessment. Is that accurate paraphrasing of what you were saying, Amy? 
Yeah, I mean, an update is usually pretty turn of the crank. I mean, sometimes things change or get added based on what happens with the update, or sometimes there's things that can go in or a mistake or whatever. Right. Um, but I'm not, you know, t traditionally <clears throat> not updating data that I'm not using in the assessment. Like I'm not updating the trawl index because it's not being used in the stock assessment directly. And so and it, each of those things takes a chunk of time right. to be completely honest about it. It's more a resource, resource allocation issue than anything else. All right, point taken. Yeah, Doug. Uh, just to distinguish two different things here um, from uh, the point of view of uh, what I said was the the annual check. Part of that annual check would be a minimalist update, turn the crank assessment, where the new data might be only what Amy just described is the key data sources you using in the management procedure. You may not even update the other stuff, but you can always do a turn the crank assessment. There's some updated information you have, but in the context of this, it would be minimalist, right. number one. Number two, you can certainly use it. It's something uh, one can check again, are things running to, to plan? Uh, my guess is that uh, you may find a certain redundancy because uh, if, you're going off, if you're going off beam with the assessment, you find the assessment's not going where you think, you'll find it's because the indices are not going where you think and the process we've set up already is there. But uh, the one other thing you might do there is we talk about developing another index. Um, that will be a, to start using that formally. I think you have to go through, that's the benchmark assessment process, mm -hmm. a thorough evaluation. Uh, are you going to use it in the benchmark assessment? Update the assessment and then uh, maybe that gets into a review of the management procedure. Right. But one could still use it as a, what you would call uh, a yellow card, not a red card. Uh, that if you do that work while you're going, you know, as you're going along, you get the first sense of your new, uh, new survey and you see, wait a bit, something different is coming out here compared to what we expected. It's got a very marked different trend. I think that uh, what that does is it, that wouldn't be sufficient to say, right, we are immediately commissioning a, a new uh, review of the management procedure, a new benchmark, so forth. But it is a signal that says maybe you have to uh, put higher priorities on moving towards that new benchmark. You've just got to call it uh, again, using a bit of common sense right. as as things develop. Right. So it's neither, again, it's a guideline. Uh, <clears throat> you can't give a rule which is black or white on that sort of thing. It depends on the nature of what you've got, the reliability, the extent of difference, if there's any. Thanks. Okay, so do we have, I think we have kind of a sense of what's, what is, what is to come. Um, I Wonder if there's anything else that anybody here feels like we ought to discuss while we're assembled here. Um, we'll be putting a report together. Um, the technical team will presumably be kind of putting their heads together fairly soon to follow up on this. And um, we'll move towards documents that would be circulated in advance of this fall MAC meeting. And then there would be a report at the MAC meeting as well, right? So. Mm -hmm. So I guess as far as my next steps, I'll, we'll try to get that report together from this workshop, um, get that out to everybody, get it distributed so that information is out there and it can be distributed broadly. This is public, so anyone can have access to any of this. Um, I'll be happy to facilitate the process on the mechanisms. Um, I'll try and get with everybody and, and see what it's going to take over the next couple of months to kind of get that started. Um, I'm assuming that the analyst team will continue to keep me in the loop on on that progress. And if we have to put a conference call together, you know, obviously we're more than happy to do that. Um, I think that's it. Our, our October meeting will be the week with, uh, I think, the 17th and 18th. Uh, 
all likelihood Gulfport, probably not Biloxi. Um, sorry, man. Because <laughs> Mississippi is our host state this time. So that's the way it works. And then the spring meeting will be somewhere in Alabama. Um, but we'll, we'll try to move forward on this stuff and kind of keep the, the ball rolling. Um, I'm pleased that we had the turnout that we did. I'm sorry some of the people didn't come. Um, I'm sorry some of the people didn't stay. Um, big, big thanks to Chad for uh, not being those people. That he came and he stayed. <laughs> and I appreciate you all tolerating my uh, input and let me uh, contribute to the process yeah, and, and the others as well. It's helpful. Doug? Uh, sorry, out of ignorance, just checking your process because I know elsewhere that's sensitive when you're dealing with a report of the meeting that's developed after the meeting. Uh, there are two ways of handling that because I presume in some sense you uh, send around a draft for comment. But at the end of the day, there can be circumstances which are very difficult when discussion reopens at the level of adoption of the report when you don't do it in a meeting. Yeah. Uh, I sometimes think it is better in circumstances like that to say, uh, and I don't know what the norms are here, just comment on it. It is the chair's report of the meeting or something. So in other words, uh, you know, you send it around a draft, you get some comments back, but then Stephen, the chair, sort it out and it goes as a chair's report. So actually, not, an, uh, not right. because otherwise, if it's a meeting report, the implications are everyone at the meeting agrees with every statement made. And sometimes yeah. it's not worthwhile so going what we around did, in circles. To speak to that, what we did for the previous meeting was basically um, Deb has extensive notes from the meeting. She shared, Stephen, she shared them with me. I provided comments to sort of clarify points that were a little bit unclear, and then we sent the report out. There was no opportunity for the participants in the meeting to edit the report or provide feedback. It was essentially minutes, and I would imagine that's what we would do again this time, so that we're whether or not like it or not, you're, there's it's not going to be a report where there would be an opportunity for people to to edit. Hearing that, I'm not unhappy with that at all because it's clear then that that is effectively the As you organizers, say, it's a chair's report, it's a chair's report yeah. and then uh, you know, uh, trust you to use your uh, common sense. If there's something that's not clear from the mm -hmm. records, you can check it. Mm -hmm. But it's much better than saying it's a meeting report and running yeah. into that problem of it's a document because if we're labeled as attendees and there's a report of the meeting. There's some implication that you it's, agree with everything exactly, in it. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just to avoid that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for hanging in here, especially those of you who started this process way back on Monday afternoon before I got here. Um, back in February. Or back in February. Well, I was here in February. Thank you, uh, Steve and team for uh, um, orchestrating a pretty seamless process from the logistical point of view. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, making sure the rain didn't, we didn't get rained out. Yeah. So, all right. I have just one more housekeeping thing. Uh, obviously, uh, we're paying the way for most of the attendees. Uh, if you choose to submit travel, that's up to you. But if you were named on the travel authorization, you were certainly encouraged to. Um, for travel with the commission, our form has changed slightly. Uh, when you get down to the per diem, we've adopted, for now, the federal process, which if you've ever traveled for the feds, the councils, uh, the first day of travel is 75% per diem. The last day of travel is 75%. Everything in between is 100%. There is no 30, 20, 30, 50. Now, if, you are not tra if you're not physically traveling, if, say, you're local, uh, I don't know how that works with claiming a lunch or something like that. And if you have any questions, call the office and Allie or Debbie can, can help you out. Um, 
you can submit these electronically now with, with scanned copies of your receipts. Again, the receipts, we don't need food receipts, but we need hotel, so your lodging, your flight, if you took one, if you had a rental car, you were approved ahead of time, always key, approved ahead of time, submit that. Um, anything else, if you have questions, please ask. Parking, all of that stuff can, can be included on here. Um, but our guidelines, we provided ahead of time along with your travel. So uh, get them in when you can, and we'll get them turned back around to you when you can, as soon as they're there. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not quantifiable because we all had to go through it. Right. Sorry about that. As, as Dr. Butterworth said, there's the pain and there's the gain. You had the pain of sitting here, but you had the gain of all of the food that we had all week. And I'm sorry there weren't beignets. I read the thing wrong. Yeah, <laughs>